So hey guys welcome back to my channel today we are gonna see what if Harry inherits the powers of fully potential dragon this is a short movie I hope you enjoy this one. So let's begin Lily's eyes softened as she looked into the crib at the sleeping forms of her two little boys. Their names were Harry and Jonas. The boys had turned one today and she giggled silently at the thought of the birthday bash that they had earlier today. It would have been a lot better if they weren't in hiding from he who must not be named. Harry and Jonas were twins but they didn't look or act alike, the only similarity between them was their green eyes, which they inherited from her. The oldest twin Harry had his father's unkempt black hair while Jonas acquired her red hair. Also when Jonas wanted something he would yell and cry until he got it, Harry on the other hand seemed to be silent and content with what he had. Lily shook her head in amusement her boys are one in a million and she wouldn't trade them for the world. She silently left her boys' room and headed towards the stairs to go find her husband when a big crash occurred downstairs and a scream of shock and pain echoed throughout the home. Her eyes widened in fear, she knew the owner of the scream, and it was her husband's, she was about to go downstairs to see what was going on when her husband screamed out at her. Lily. Take the kids and, James was silent. Lily put a hand over her mouth fearing the worst. She ran quickly back to her children's room and she could hear the sound of someone coming slowly up the steps and she had a feeling it wasn't James. When she finally got to the room and closed the door, she ran over towards the crib and saw that Harry was awake. She was about to pick both her children up when the door burst open, Lily turned around to face the intruder keeping her body between the intruder and the crib. Then Lily's eyes widened when she saw Voldemort's sadistic smile on his face. Move, he told her calmly. I am only here for the boys, if you let me pass I may let you live. She growled at him, over my dead body. He chuckled maliciously, now now dear didn't your parents ever tell you to wait your turn? Voldemort then mumbled a spell and with a wave of his wand Lily crumbled to the ground unconscious. She actually believed she could stop him. He looked down at her with a sneer, I'll kill you after I kill the brats. He then walked close to the crib and glared hatefully at the children inside. These mere children were supposed to stop him? The great Voldemort? Inconceivable. Let's see how you brats can beat me when you are dead, Avada Kedavra. With that a green light burst out from the tip of his wand and hurtled toward the children. Voldemort was about to cackle insanely from his success when all of a sudden Harry screamed and an unknown burst of energy came forth from the one-year-old's body. The energy formed into a shield and when the spell made contact, it bounced off. Voldemort then cried out in surprise and anger as he was hit with the rebounded spell, killing his living body. Since the shield of energy was brought up at the last minute, it caused Harry to get a little backlash. Luckily the only damage was that it knocked him out and gave him a lightning bolt scar on his forehead. Jonas groggily opened his eyes, who dared disturb his sleep. He was having such a nice nap, but then someone just had to scream, which woke him up. Jonas began to cry loudly. If he was going to be rudely awakened, then he will wake everyone else in the home as well. A few moments later Jonas paused his crying fit. Where were his mom and dad? They should have been here by now taking care of him. This made Jonas angry and he began to cry even louder. That was when he heard Mad shuffling up the stairs coming towards his room. In through the door came his father and two other people he didn't recognize. One was an old man with a very long white beard and the other was a man with a weird moving eye. His father immediately kneeled down a few feet from the crib and muttered something with a wave of his wand. What was his father doing? Doesn't his father see he wants attention? What could be so much more important than him? Jonas's questions were answered when he saw his mother groggily getting up. She was here the whole time and yet she didn't check on him? Did she think sleep was more important than her son? When Lily was finally aware of her surroundings, she smiled in relief at seeing her husband alive. A look of fear crossed her face and she looked at the crib and then sighed in relief when she saw her sons were alive. What happened here? Albus, the old man with the white long beard asked kindly. Moody, the other stranger grunted in agreement. Well, began James as he held his wife, I was downstairs at the time. James then told Albus and Moody what he knew and then he was finished. Lily picked up from where he left off with what happened to her. The adults were so engrossed in their conversation. They didn't notice Harry's scar vanishing without a trace or the content smile gracing the child's lips. Hmm. Albus rubbed his chin thoughtfully at what he was told. Voldemort came and knocked out James and Lily. 
Voldemort was probably planning on killing the boys first and then leaving the parents to suffer the fate of having their children dead. Obviously something went wrong. Lily said Harry was awake when she reached him but he looked to be asleep now. When Albus arrived he saw that Jonas was awake. Maybe Lily got the boys confused and it was Jonas that was awake the whole time. It is possible considering the boys were twins and she was extremely frightened for her children's lives at the time. What do you think Albus? James asked. Albus walked over to the crib and picked up Jonas. He is the one who defeated Voldemort. How do you know? Asked Lily. From what I can see, neither of the boys are injured, Voldemort is gone, and Jonas was awake the whole time. Obviously he somehow defeated Voldemort. But it was Harry who was awake when Voldemort came and not Jonas, Lily told Albus. You probably mistook Jonas for Harry because of the situation. Lily was about to object Albus saying that she would never confuse which child was which even in an extreme situation but she decided against it. Albus was a wise man and he was probably right maybe she did mix them up. None of the adults could argue with Albus's claim that Jonas is the boy who lived. Albus always seemed to know what is right. Now I have many things, I have to do. Albus told the Potters. Give Jonas a lot of attention and take good care of him, he deserves it considering he is now the boy who lived. We will Albus. James told him. Harry groggily woke up and gasped as he looked around at his surroundings. It was like he was floating in a white abyss, everything was white. The last thing he remembered was this unknown yet strangely familiar energy bursting forth from his body. It protected him from the evil Mons attack, but after that it is a blank. Harry then gasped sharply as foreign memories entered his head. One was of him banging on a window, screaming at a laughing man with long black hair to let him go. The man just glared cruelly at Harry and that's when Harry saw the man had a tail. Another memory was of Harry kneeling beside a beaten and bleeding body of a green man. Harry felt extreme sadness for some reason the green man seemed special to him. More memories soon followed. Why was he getting these images? Was there a reason for it? There must be. Could it be that these may be memories of a past life? As if that question was the key to the truth. Harry began to glow. Harry closed his green eyes and when he opened them again they weren't green, they were black. There was another difference as well, he appeared to be twelve years old. I really died. Gohan sighed. Yes Harry was none other than Gohan, or at least he used to be before he was killed. Gohan eyes dimmed in sadness from the memory of how he died. Never in a million years would he have thought he would die that way. Shaking his head he decided to figure out what was going on. Okay. From the looks of it I am in my mind. I am one year old in this life. An evil man came to my house and knocked out my mom. The man was about to kill me with some weird attack from a stick, when my powers must have unlocked themselves to protect me from harm. Now I can remember my past life, but why? Since you unlocked your powers, it was only right for you to remember. A voice said from behind him. To tell you the truth I wasn't expecting you to unlock your powers so soon. Gohan turned to face the owner of the voice. His eyes met with a pair of amused ones. The person had purple skin, a white mohawk, earrings dangling from their pointed ears, and seemed to have an air of authority around them. The stranger's appearance might have shocked Gohan if he wasn't used to seeing different colored beings. Who are you? Gohan questioned him. The stranger only laughed lightly, how rude of me. I am the Supreme Kai at your service. The stranger ended his introductory with a playful bow. Gohan's eyes widened. The Supreme Kai? He knew about King Kai from his father, but he didn't know there was more than one Kai. The stranger nodded, yes there are more than one Kai. I am the most powerful one of the Kais. Gohan got confused. Why would a Kai waste his time with him? The Supreme Kai sighed, for the reason you are a special case. You need to understand something Gohan. The Supreme Kai looked at Gohan seriously. You were never supposed to die. Gohan reeled back in shock. What? He wasn't supposed to have died, then why did he die and why was he reborn? The Kai answered his question, yes, you weren't. You were supposed to have lived in peace for seven years, but something unforeseen happened. You were murdered and betrayed by someone you loved. Gohan closed his eyes as he clenched his hands into fists, trying to stop the feelings of betrayal and hurt from showing through tears. The person that had killed him was the last person he would have suspected. Supreme Kai continued. I didn't even expect something like that would happen. 
With your unexpected death it caused some problems with the flow of the timeline. Gohan looked at the Kai in confusion, what kind of problems? Gohan I am going to be quite clear with you. You were destined to help fight against an evil wizard named Babidi and his creation Boo six years from now. But since you died the chance of defeating them went down greatly. As a last ditch effort I pulled some strings and allowed you to be reborn in the hopes that you will remember in time for the battle. Only I and a few others know of your rebirth. Why didn't I just get wished back to life with the Dragon Balls? asked Gohan. You wouldn't have been able to be brought back with the Dragon Balls because from your friends and family's point of view you died naturally. Anger filled Gohan, naturally? They actually believed the way I died was natural? Didn't my father realize something was amiss when I didn't show up in the other world? The Kai nodded, they believed you died naturally because the person behind your death told them so and they trusted the person. About your father well, Kai paused with a nervous look on his face. Gohan looked at the Kai confused, what about my father, did something happen to him? The Kai shook his head, nothing bad, it's just that he doesn't even know you have died yet because he was competing in a tournament at that time. Gohan's eyes saddened, his own father doesn't even take the time to see if he was okay. Instead he goes off to fight in a tournament, is that why his father didn't want to come back? To fight in some stupid tournament? Does he care more about a tournament than his family? Gohan don't think like that your father does care about you. I know your father's decision wasn't the best but he can make mistakes as well. No one is perfect. The Kai was right no one is perfect. Gohan sighed, but it still hurts that his father is clueless about his son's death. Gohan decided it was the best time to change the subject. You mentioned that you hoped I would remember. Does that mean there was a chance I wouldn't have remembered in time? Supreme Kai looked at Gohan seriously. In all honesty Gohan you weren't supposed to regain your power or memory until you were 12, the age you were killed. Then why have I regained my memory and power so soon? Gohan's eyes then lit up in realization. Is it because I was attacked by that evil man and my life was at stake? Kai nodded again, yes I believe that is what had happened. This is another thing I needed to tell you about. The Kai's face got serious. Gohan I unknowingly plunged you into another destiny. Another destiny? Yes another destiny. You are living in a society that is full of wizards and witches. There has been a war that has been going on for quite some time. It has been against an evil force that calls himself Voldemort. There was a prophecy that told of his defeat by the hands of a child and he didn't want that so he tried to eliminate the threat. Gohan began to realize what the Kai is trying to say, that man that attacked my family and I was Voldemort. He was trying to kill me because I was the one predicted in that prophesy. Yes and you have temporarily defeated him, now you will be known as the boy who lived and you will be famous in the eyes of the wizard world. Your parents as well as others will train you to be prepared when Voldemort returns. Not only that, your parents will spoil you and give you lots of attention. Gohan cut him off, um Supreme Kai? Supreme Kai looked at Gohan questioning, yes? Gohan blushed lightly in embarrassment, um. I was wondering if you could make it so no one knows that I am the boy who lived. Why not? Well the main reason is, Gohan began, I don't like being the center of attention or being worshipped or anything. Also I wouldn't be able to train to my full potential if I am under constant watch. So can you do something about it? I will still fight Voldemort, I just don't want the attention. The Supreme Kai rubbed his chin in thought, it didn't surprise him that Gohan doesn't want to be acknowledged. Gohan's personality clearly shows that he doesn't like being the center of attention. The only way I can think of is to make it so your brother Jonas is believed to be the boy who lived. That's perfect, exclaimed Gohan, but, the Supreme Kai trailed off. What's the problem? asked Gohan, if I do this there is a pretty big chance that your parents will ignore you in favor for your brother. They are only human after all. Are you sure you want me to go through with this? Gohan's eyes saddened, the last thing he wants is to be ignored by his family. Gohan bit his lip, but if he didn't do this, his brother will be ignored and Gohan couldn't have that. He would rather suffer than have anyone in his family suffer. Besides Jonas will be trained and prepared for when Voldemort returns. Hopefully all this attention will not go to Jonas's head, yes I am sure. The Supreme Kai had heard what Gohan was thinking and his respect for Gohan increased. He knew how hard it was to be selfless, especially for a mortal. So be it. Concentrating the Kai made Gohan's scar disappear. Your scar is only temporarily removed, it will appear when you turn 11. 
I could remove it completely but it may be helpful in the future. Gohan saw the hidden meaning. The scar would obviously help him. How, Gohan knew the Kai is going to make Gohan find out on his own so Gohan wasn't even going to ask. Gohan gave a content smile knowing that his brother will be taken care of. The scar was the only evidence that Gohan or rather Harry defeated the Dark Lord, with it gone there is no proof. So hopefully Jonas will be chosen as the boy who lived. Before I leave, the Supreme Kai spoke calmly, a year from now I will give you a bracelet. Now this bracelet will keep your key and magic signature cloak so you can train. Gohan's eyes lit up in gratitude. But I need a favor in return. Gohan frowned, what is it? The Supreme Kai sighed, I was hoping you will join the fight against Babidi in six years since you have regained your powers and memory. Gohan thought about it. He owed the Kai a lot for what he has done for him, even though it is the Kai's fault that Gohan has to deal with Lord Voldewarts. The only thing that is holding him back is if he agrees, he will no doubt see his old family and friends. That means also seeing the person that killed him. Gohan grabbed his head in frustration, what should he do? If you do this Gohan, I won't force you to reveal your true identity and I can come up with a plausible excuse. Well if he doesn't have to reveal himself, Gohan sighed, I'll do it. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I allow someone to kill people and do nothing about it. Supreme Kai smiled, thank you. Before he left, the Supreme Kai yelled, see you in a year, before fading from view. Gohan began to wonder what he has gotten himself into. A seven-year-old Harry whistled a soft tune as he made breakfast. Whistling always calmed Harry down when something big was on his mind especially when he was Gohan. Harry's mind was swamped with a little dread and some excitement at what is going to happen in a few days. The World's Martial Arts Tournament. A lot has happened in the past six years. In appearance the merge hadn't changed Harry much from before Voldemort's attack. It was the accident when he turned two that changed his appearance. The merge let him keep Lily's green eyes. The only difference was that his unkempt black hair he inherited from James seemed to defy gravity even more. Harry knew that having two names would be very confusing to not only him but to anyone else who might find out his secret. Since people only know of him as Harry he decided to just stick with that name. Why cause unnecessary problems over a name anyway? Half of Harry's blood came from Lily and James. The other half changed into Saiyan blood or at least that is what Harry hypothesized because his tail had grown back a week before his second birthday. Luckily it grew back when he was alone so he was able to hide it. Sadly it didn't take much effort to hide it from Lily and James since they have been ignoring him in favor of Jonas ever since he could walk properly. Which was a month after Voldemort's attack. Also during that month, Harry had overheard a conversation between James and Lily. Apparently Peter Pettigrew, a trusted friend, betrayed the Potters and gave out their location to Voldemort. Peter was captured by Aurors and was placed in Azkaban, a wizard jail. It is said that the slimy rat was still alive. Harry found out about the Marauders, their enigmas forms and a lot of other secrets from his father. Harry frowned he wasn't one to hate people, but people like Peter sicken him. Betraying one's friends just to save one's own hide is low. Luckily his father is dedicated and loyal to his friends unless said friends betray or hurt him and his family. If one had his father as an enemy they better sleep with their eyes open because Harry's father is ruthless when it comes to protecting what is precious to him. Harry's eyes softened as he thought of his father. His father has been there for him through thick and thin. He was there when everyone else ignored him. Gave Harry attention and comforted Harry when he was lonely or scared. He did everything a father would or should do for their child. Harry felt safe and secure whenever he was around his father. The thing he loved best about his father is that Harry didn't have to keep any secrets from him. Harry told his father everything after the incident that occurred when Harry turned two. Instead of being shunned or sent to a mental hospital his father understood, of course that could have been because Supreme Kai decided to meet his father face to face. Hey his father almost peed his pants when he realized who he was talking to him. Speaking of his father, Harry could hear soft shuffling of feet coming down the stairs and into the kitchen. Harry knew that his father was trying to sneak up on him and it would have probably worked if Harry were a normal kid. Alas young Harry wasn't normal or even fully human for that matter. Morning dad. Harry stated cheerfully not even glancing behind him. Harry heard his father sigh in defeat and could only imagine the look on his father's face at being caught again. Harry felt his father ruffle his hair with a grin. Good morning cub. One of these days I will get you. 
Harry just rolled his eyes, whatever you say Mooney. Yes Remus is his father. Remus adopted Harry when Harry was two. James and Lily wanted to get rid of Harry for various reasons. As a front they told the wizarding world that it is too difficult to give the right amount of attention to Jonas and to take care of another child at the same time. Sadly most of the wizarding world were fools so they accepted the reason without a second thought. Some went as far as giving ideas to the potters on how to get rid of Harry. The real reasons why the potters were willing to get rid of Harry made Remus's blood boil. The potters found out about Harry's ability to talk to snakes and about the incident. Both had caused the potters to believe that Harry was an evil dark wizard in the making. To Remus that was bloody ridiculous accusing their own son of being a dark wizard just because he has abilities deemed as dark. It wasn't like Harry asked to be a parcelmouth or the incident to occur. Add on to the fact he was only two at the time. The day the potters found out about Harry's ability to talk to snakes was a few days before Harry turned two. Lily found Harry in the family garden, talking to a snake. With fear in her eyes at the prospect of having a dark wizard as her child she got James. Together they punished Harry by locking him in his room for the night without supper and forbade him from talking to snakes. Now this wasn't the main reason for them to put Harry up for adoption, no it was the incident that was the final straw. Remus remembered that night very well. It was the night Harry was kidnapped and changed. It was also the night Remus promised to protect his cub to the best of his abilities. It was the night he learned the truth about Harry and that dreadful night a year before. Flashback it was when Harry and Jonas turned two. The Potters decided to have a birthday bash in the park and later that night set off some muggle fireworks. Sad thing was almost everyone that came only brought a present for Jonas and forgot about little Harry. The only people that seemed to remember were Remus, Sirius, and Hagrid. Not even James and Lily seemed to have remembered. Even though the three were giving Harry attention, they eventually were pulled into conversations with other adults or were saying happy birthday to Jonas. This left Harry to wander off deeper into the park and away from the festivity. Harry wanted to find a quiet place to relax and plan his training regime for the future. Since he was going to get the bracelet tonight from Supreme Kai. Harry realized a year ago, that even though he had all the power from when he died, actually Harry had felt that he was stronger and key than before, his body was still that of a baby. He needed to retrain his body to be able to use his key without damaging his body. In the past year, Harry learned how to walk properly and began to build up his endurance by running. But that's all he could do in terms of physical strength until he got the bracelet. So Harry decided to train his mind during that year. All that training Piccolo gave him helped a lot. His mental shields and other abilities were getting stronger by each passing day. Harry was brought out of his thoughts when he came into a clearing. He looked around and spotted nobody. Content with that he went over to a tree and sat down lost in thought. Remus started saying goodbye to everyone since the sun was starting to go down, as much as he would have loved to watch the fireworks it was going to be a full moon tonight. He was about finished saying his goodbyes the last being to Harry when he noticed Harry wasn't around. With a worried frown Remus asked around if anyone saw Harry and was given a negative. Remus began to panic and ran over to his best friend. Sirius was attempting to flirt with a beautiful young woman when Remus came over and started shaking Sirius's shoulders hysterically. Remus what are you still doing here, I thought you were leaving, Sirius asked confused. I was but, I can't find Harry, Remus nearly screamed. What? Where is he? Sirius demanded. Now he knew why Remus was being so frantic. Remus cared for Harry deeply and tried to be there for Harry like a father. Which Harry needed considering his own blood father ignores him. Sirius growled at that thought. He loves James like a brother but Sirius is really disappointed in the way James and Lily were acting towards Harry. I don't know that's why I am asking you. Sirius grabbed a hold of Remus's arms firmly and gently removed them from his shoulders. He didn't need Remus to shake him like a rag doll not because Sirius was afraid to lose brain cells but because it looks rather embarrassing in front of the woman he is trying to few. Standing Sirius guided Remus away from the party but not before giving the girl he was flirting with a wink. The girl just rolled her eyes at Sirius. Remus you know Harry better than anyone, where do you think he might go? Sirius asked. Remus thought for a second before his face brightened in realization. Harry isn't one for crowds so he must have found somewhere else to go. Sirius nodded to a path that leads further into the park. Let's go this way and quickly before the sun goes down. 
Remus nodded and followed. A few minutes later they came into a clearing and let out a sigh of relief. Harry was sitting calmly beneath a tree on the opposite side of the clearing from where they were. What made Sirius and Remus stop in shock was a little bird that was comfortably perched on Harry's shoulder and a squirrel that was sitting beside Harry near his right hand. Harry. Remus said with a wave as he and Sirius made their way to Harry. Harry looked up and smiled warmly, he muttered something to the bird and squirrel that made them scurry off. Harry then stood and calmly dusted himself off and was about to walk towards Remus and Sirius when he was suddenly hit in the side by a spell. The last thing Harry saw before blacking out were the shocked and fearful faces of Sirius and Remus that screamed out his name simultaneously. Remus and Sirius watched in horror as the spell hit Harry. A figure covered in a hood sprang out from the bushes where the spell was cast from and grabbed Harry before dashing off. Harry! screamed out Remus about to run after the hooded figure. Sirius grabbed his arm forcing him to stop his pursuit. Let go Padfoot! growled Remus. I need to go save Harry. But Mooney it's almost dark out by the time we find Harry the moon will be out. It will be better if you go back and tell the others and then go home. While you tell them I will go find Harry. Grabbing Remus' shoulders reassuringly Sirius spoke softly, don't worry we'll get him back. Remus's head was bowed so Sirius couldn't see his face but he did feel Remus's shoulder sag. Thinking that Remus understood Sirius was unprepared when Remus grabbed his wrists painfully. With a growl Remus glared at Sirius with tinted gold eyes. I don't care if the moon comes out and I change. I don't care if some foolish person gets hurt or killed by me. All I care about is getting my cub back. He shoved Sirius roughly to the ground. You can go and get the others but I am going after the ignorant fleshbag that had the gall to kidnap my cub. Remus then turned and ran in the direction of the kidnapper leaving Sirius to sit on the ground in shock. Sirius knew that Remus gets a little edgy and rude when it's close to a full moon but he usually controls his temper quite well so hardly anyone except close friends would notice. But obviously Harry's kidnapping affected Remus enough for him to forego keeping his temper in check and instead find Harry at all costs. Even if innocent bystanders are at risk. This is what shocked Sirius because usually the fear of someone getting hurt by his werewolf side causes Remus to make sure he was in a place where no one can be harmed. With a sigh Sirius got up from the ground and ran to where the party was to get help. Though in his mind he knew that Remus would be able to find and hopefully save Harry on his own. Sirius gave a silent prayer to the poor idiot that had taken Harry, they were going to need it. Remus sniffed the air and growled he was close. Remus looked around carefully the full moon was out. The chase had lead him out of the park boundaries and into the woods. The transformed Remus had only one thing on his mind getting his cub back at any cost. One of the good things about being a werewolf was his heightened sense. He was using his sense of smell to track down Harry's uniquely blended smell of monkey and human. There was also a familiar smell mixed with Harry's that sent Remus's wolf side mad. The kidnapper was a werewolf. Hold on cub I'm coming Remus thought with growl. The kidnapping werewolf placed the feverish form of Harry on the floor of the cabin. The werewolf that had captured Harry, hadn't been a werewolf very long when he had joined Voldemort. So Voldemort was able to sway the werewolf to his side because of the vulnerability caused by that fact. The werewolf wanted to turn Harry and then raise Harry to hate the Potters and then kill them. What he didn't expect was after biting Harry, a very enraged werewolf Remus barged in and at seeing the unconscious form of Harry sweating with what looked to be a fever and a pair of bite marks. Remus knew what had happened and killed the werewolf for daring to harm and turn his cub. Yes his cub, werewolf Remus had become fond of Harry. There was just something about Harry that made the werewolf in Remus at peace. This caused the werewolf to become very protective of Harry because the werewolf loved the peaceful feeling he got when he was around Harry. Harry is his cub and nothing will harm Harry if werewolf Remus had anything to say about it. After making sure the foolish werewolf was dead Remus went over to Harry who had begun to transform. Brown hair started to cover Harry's body and Harry's green eyes snapped open and started to become feral. Teeth began to sharpen and claws began to sprout. Harry's clothes started to rip and shred as this transformation occurred. When it ended in its place was a chibi looking werewolf with feral green eyes. The feral look faded and in its place was a calculating look. Harry was able to control the transformation thanks to the memories of a training session Gohan had with Vegeta. Gohan had asked Vegeta how he was able to control his ape form without going berserk. 
Vegeta revealed that the person had to confront their inner beast and accept it. Then the beast and person will merge, therefore allowing control. With that in mind werewolf Harry looked around. Then he looked up into the eyes of a werewolf who he knew was Remus just from his key. Harry knew Remus would not hurt him because Remus had been more of a father figure the past year than James. Remus was always there for Harry taking care of him whenever Harry's parents ignore him, which was becoming more frequent. Harry lifted his furry arms up in a gesture that he wanted to be picked up. Remus immediately picked up the chibi werewolf and hugged Harry. Harry hugged back glad to have someone save him. End flashback they stayed in the cabin that night, curled up next to each other. That night Harry met not only the Supreme Kai in his mindscape but Remus as well. After some explaining from the Kai which just the mere thought of seeing a Kai made Remus almost wet himself, they found out a lot. Harry was given his bracelet that night and Remus found out the truth. All three of them learned that Harry being bitten caused some unforeseen effects. Never before had the Kai seen a hybrid be bitten by a werewolf let alone a Saiyan hybrid. From what the Kai could sense and see the werewolf genes and the Saiyan genes somehow merged. Instead of a monkey tail Harry now had a wolf tail. His hair turned brown but was still as spiky as ever and he retained Lily's green eyes. As the years passed from that day, Harry learned even more of the side effects. Silver didn't affect him, his senses were heightened in both forms. Werewolf form more so, able to use key in both forms without much problem, he only transforms if he looks at a full moon, and he can change how big he is at will in his werewolf form. Harry took out plates from the cupboard and started to fill them up with tons of food. One plate had a noticeably bigger amount of food than the other. Harry walked over to the table where his father sat reading the paper. Placing the plate with less food in front of his father, he sat down and began munching on his own food. Remus glanced up from reading the paper for a moment and shook his head. One thing that didn't change from the accident was Harry's appetite. A few days later laughter and smiles were heard and seen as people walked around the festival. Children ran around with carefree smiles. Adults smiling at the prospect of having a day off in the tournament that is afoot. Today is the world's martial arts tournament. Green eyes look out of scraggly brown hair to stare at a group of people. The group ignores or is oblivious to the stare as they continue to laugh and talk. Green eyes close and a sigh of sadness left the mouth of the owner. A hand was placed on the shoulder of the person with the green eyes. Said eyes followed the hand up until they were met with reassuring brown eyes. I know you can do this cub. Remember I am going to be right here with you. Harry's green eyes softened and his body relaxed. With a small smile he murmured, thank you Remus. Remus responded with a light squeeze to Harry's shoulder and then turned his attention to the group that caused his cub so much worry. If anyone in that group hurts his cub in any way they were going to regret it. Remus doesn't care if most of them in that group are stronger than him. Payback doesn't have to always be a straightforward fist fight, with a few choice words and a wave of his hand he can make them regret it. Yes, Remus knew how to do wandless magic, as does Harry. These past five years Remus and Harry not only trained physically and mentally but also magically. Remus taught Harry about magic, while Harry taught Remus about key and creating mental barriers to protect his mind. They both helped push each other to new limits. Harry was by far better than Remus in all three aspects but Remus didn't mind. Not to say Remus was weak, because he wasn't. Compared to humans he is very strong. If Harry had to guess Remus could give the human Z fighters a run for their money. Remus is quite deadly with the mixture of magic and martial arts. The training to get this strong was very difficult, some days Remus wanted to drop to the ground and just lay there for eternity but he never did. He continued until the given break times and he is glad he never gave up. Not only is he strong physically and magically, he can now control his werewolf form when he transforms because of his mental training. The first thing he did, with Harry's guidance, was accepting his werewolf side and merging with it. That merge changed his appearance to what it is today. Remus's hair was still brown but his eyes have a golden tint to them. His face is nicely shaved. The greatest thing about the merge was that Remus's hair won't gray prematurely from the stress of being a werewolf since he can control it now. As Remus glanced down at Harry again he sighed. Harry, he is starting to learn, is going to become the new reason Remus is going to gray prematurely. Remus knew Harry was going to get in loads of trouble in the times to come starting today. Harry had his own set of thoughts when he looked at the group filled with his old family and friends when he was Gohan. 
When Supreme Kai had contacted Harry about where Harry needed to be to help fight the evil wizard Babidi, Harry was expecting it to be at some hidden location or in the middle of nowhere. What he was told shocked him. Supreme Kai wanted him to go to a tournament and enter in the children division. Not just any tournament but the world's martial arts tournament. That meant that he will surely bump into his old friends and family, said people were not far from him at the moment. There was a dreaded feeling that when he actually meets them it won't turn out pretty. Hopefully they will not recognize him not only because he was wearing the bracelet but also from his appearance. Maybe he can complete this favor to the Kai without being revealed. Harry snorted knowing his luck that won't happen. If you asked Godin how he is right now he would tell you that he is the happiest person in the world. First, he gets to hang out with his bestest friend in the whole wide world trunks. Not only that, he is also at the famed world's martial arts tournament and mom was going to let him participate too. They had to meet up with everyone at Capsule Core before going to the tournament. Godin was surprised that everyone was able to fit in the plane easily. There was Krillin, his daughter Marin and his wife 18. Why she was called 18 Godin didn't know, maybe her parents liked numbers, he wasn't about to ask her though because she can be scary. Then there was Yamcha and his talking kitty Puar. Finally there was Oolong the pig, his grandpa the ox king, his mom, Trunk, Bulma, Vegeta, and Mirai. Godin knew Trunks and his family pretty much his whole life, except for Mirai. Mirai, Godin was told, came from the future years ago to warn everyone about an evil threat and to help defeat it. After defeating the threat, Mirai went back to his time to fix it and then went back to the past a year later to tell everyone he defeated the enemies in his time. Mirai before going back to his original time told everyone that it was the last time they would probably ever see him again. That was proven wrong when he appeared six months ago with a sad smile. Godin and everyone else found out that Mirai's mom tampered with the time machine so Mirai wouldn't be able to return to his own time. She had snuck a message and a lot of his belongings in the time machine. The message said she wanted him to live in a healthy future and not a broken one. Mirai was angry at first but soon accepted his fate and actually looked forward to it when he realized he was in a time where Gohan is the same age as him. That feeling of happiness was shattered when Mirai found out about Gohan. Godin frowned slightly. Godin knew Gohan was his older brother who died years ago from a sickness but that is about it. Gohan appeared to be a taboo topic, nobody wanted to talk about Gohan and actually no one really did until Mirai showed up. To tell the truth that is when Godin first found out he even had an older brother. His mom never mentioned it and there were no pictures of Gohan around the house. Godin wished he could meet his brother, because no matter how much he tried to deny it he is jealous of Trunks and Mirai. Even though Mirai is only the future self of his best friend Trunks, the two acted like brothers and even called each other so. Trunks told him about how Mirai had taken him to the park and various places, how they played games, and how Mirai taught him, super awesome amazing things. Now it wasn't like Mirai was ignoring Godin actually Mirai taught him some things, but Godin wanted his own big brother that is there most of the time and not some of the time. Another thing that Godin wanted was to be the center of attention just for a little bit. Godin wanted to feel that he is important and special to someone. Mirai was nice to teach him how to fly, but did he really have to teach that Satan girl too? Mirai, Godin learned decided to go to high school and interact with people his age. After some time Mirai decided to fight crime because he wouldn't stand by and let innocents get hurt. Mirai came up with this idea of dressing up as a superhero to hide his identity and Bulma helped by creating it. He called himself the Great Saiyaman, and it seemed to work. It was tough but he was able to keep his crime fighting secret, well until the Satan girl found out. Godin learned she was a crime fighter. Her dad is Hercule, and to Godin that added her up to being very spoiled and demanding. When she found out Mirai's secret she blackmailed him into teaching her to fly. She blackmailed him and Mirai actually went along with it. The Satan girl was a big, meanie, poopy head not only for blackmailing Mirai but for glaring at Godin during the flying lessons. She wouldn't stop glaring until Mirai went over to Godin and suggested to him to fly slower. Mirai told Godin that the girl didn't like that Godin was progressing faster than her. Godin thought Mirai was being stupid. It wasn't his fault the girl was a slow learner and weak for that matter. Godin was brought out of his thoughts when he heard Trunks call his name. Yeah Trunks? Asked Godin. Can you believe it? We are going to participate in the tournament? Godin grinned in excitement. I know this is going to be so much fun. Mirai gave them a look behind his sunglasses, 
Remember you two know Super Saiyan. Godin and Trunks gave Mirai an innocent look and said in unison, Yes mommy. Mirai just rolled his eyes and looked around. They were all standing outside the entrance to the tournament on an open sidewalk. Trunks looked at Mirai, so why are we just standing around and not registering? We are waiting for Godin's father Goku, little brother. Trunks turned to Godin, what is taking your father so long? Godin gave Trunks a confused look and shrugged, how should I know, I haven't met him before. Trunks slightly winced, he forgot that this will be the first time Godin would meet his father. He gave Godin an apologetic look, Godin I am sore. Trunks never got to finish as Godin cut him off with a smile and a wave of dismissal. You don't need to apologize Trunks, you were right when you said he is taking forever. Trunks gave a slight smile and then looked around, I hope your father hurries Godin. Waiting is so boring. Trunks' tone made Godin giggle as he looked around himself, his mother was chatting with Bulma. Vegeta actually looked to be in a good mood today, he was only glaring at anyone who looked at him. Krillin and 18 were holding their daughter's hand while talking to the others, well Krillin was. 18 was just standing there silently looking bored out of her mind. That was when Godin saw him or at least he thinks it's a him. He looked kind of green. Godin wondered if he was sick. He was tall wearing a purple GI with a red waistband and wristbands. The most noticeable thing was his long white cape and his funny towel looking hat. Godin wondered who he was. He was under a tree not far from them. Actually he was close enough to look a part of the group but far enough no one in the group noticed him immediately. Godin saw Vegeta give the big green man with the pointed ears and long white cape a glance and a curt nod before looking elsewhere. So Vegeta knew him so who was he? Godin decided to find out. He couldn't be that bad could he? The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and Piccolo felt the urge to strangle someone. Why the hell was he here again? He could be training or meditating under a waterfall, but no he decided to come to the tournament and be around these. Ha ha ha, laughed Yamcha in happiness, Piccolo twitched. Annoying idiots. Ha 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 isn't this great? The whole gang is getting back together, grinned Yamcha. Yeah, said Krillin as he clenched his hands in excitement, we finally get to see Goku again. Piccolo was definitely wondering if that merge with Kami years ago had some unforeseen impact on his mental health. Why the hell is he willingly around these idiots? Before the merge he would have rather watched the ice caps melt than be around these buffoons. He definitely wasn't here for Goku or the tournament. He could care less about Goku and the tournament was just something to cure his boredom. So are you going to participate in the tournament Yamcha? Chi Chi the she demon asked. No I gave up fighting, all I would do is embarrass myself. Piccolo saw Vegeta give him a glance and a curt nod, which Piccolo returned. Vegeta at least acknowledged his existence. After his death Piccolo isolated himself from pretty much everyone except Dend and Mr. Popo. It wasn't hard because most of the group that was present were either afraid of him, hated his guts, or both. The only reason he ever got along with the group in the first place was because of him and Goku, him more so than Goku. With both gone there was really no point in sticking around. Why did he have to die, the one and only person who truly cared about him and who Piccolo cared for in return? Why did he have to die and so young too, Piccolo was brought out of his thoughts by a tug on his cape. He glared down at the offender who looked up at him innocently. Goku and the she demon's son, Godin gave him a curious smile and asked, who are you? Piccolo stared at him for a brief moment before turning his attention to the side as if ignoring him, Piccolo, was all he said to the boy. Piccolo wasn't surprised that Godin didn't know who he was. The brat's mother despised him and went to great lengths to make sure Godin never met Piccolo. She feared that Piccolo will corrupt her little angel like he did the last. How Piccolo knew this was because she told him bluntly the day of his funeral. Flashback the sky was gloomy as it looked down at a hill where a grave laid. A small group of people were around it with tears and sadness. All of the Z gang was there with the exception of Goku. Everyone looked sad and solemn, even Vegeta looked slightly sad. Chi Chi was weeping in her father's arms as he patted her back gently. The giant man whispered things like, it is going to be okay. And we'll get through this. No one knew if it was towards his daughter or himself. Piccolo stood under a tree before getting enough courage to get closer to the engraved stone. His movement caught everyone's attention, even Chi Chi's. Chi Chi got out of her father's arms and turned to Piccolo. Her sadness turned to anger at the sight of him. 
What the hell are you doing here? She hissed in anger. Piccolo gave her a blank look, I am here to see Gohan. Chi Chi growled, You aren't allowed here, go away, I don't want you here. Piccolo glared at her, I could care less about what you want wench. Chi Chi looked ready to jump him in anger but her father held her back, let me go so I can hit him with my frying pan, you foul demon get the hell away from here, haven't you caused enough damage for once? Krillin tried to calm Chi Chi down, come on Chi Chi calm down. Calm down. Chi Chi screamed causing Krillin to flinch, you want me to calm down? Hell no. That monster, Chi Chi looked pointedly at Piccolo, is the whole reason why my son is dead. Almost everyone gasped at that accusation. What the hell are you talking about? Piccolo asked with slightly narrowed eyes, what right does she have to accuse him of killing her son? Oh don't play dumb you monster. You corrupted my son, before he met you Gohan was a sweet little studious angel. If you didn't dig your dirty evil claws into him, he might still be alive. You brainwashed him into becoming a fighter and a hooligan like his father and look where it lead him. Piccolo growled. Chi Chi, came the reprimanding tone of the Ox King, you have gone too far. Piccolo never brainwashed Gohan. Gohan made the choice to fight on his own. He also didn't kill Gohan or cause his death. Gohan had died from that wretched heart virus. Piccolo cares just as much about Gohan as you and I do. Chi Chi was stunned for a moment that her father was actually reprimanding her before bowing her head in what appeared to be regret but was actually anger. Do you really want to act this way at your son's funeral? Finished the Ox King with a smile as he released his hold on his daughter, thinking that his daughter calmed down and was regretful about her actions. Chi Chi stood there silently before turning towards her father with her head still down. Well, asked the ox king shut the hell up dad i am not a little girl anymore i have the right to do anything i want with anything related to my children chi chi yelled in anger causing her father to step back in fright chi chi turned back to piccolo and you you can stay but that is it i don't want to see you anywhere near my house you monster i will not have you corrupt another one of my innocent angels chi chi is what you said what i think you said asked bulma chi chi turned to bulma all anger wiped from her face, yes I am pregnant. Everyone was shocked at the unexpected news. W-H, when, how? asked Krillin. Chi Chi gave Krillin a mischievous look, well when a man and a woman love each other very much. Krillin blushed and waved his hands in front of him, stop, that is not what I meant. Chi Chi shrugged, you were the one that asked. A few people laughed happy that the mood was lightened. Chi Chi smiled again and in a soft voice said, I am done here. Come on everyone let's all go to my house and have some food. She started walking towards her house then stopped and turned to Piccolo. Her happy demeanor quickly turned to hate, remember monster stay away from me and my family. After that cold statement she smiled a brilliant smile like nothing happened and continued on her way home. The others shortly began to follow, and not long after it were only Piccolo and the grave outside. Piccolo read the caption on the stone softly. Here lies son Gohan. Beloved friend, student, son, and grandson may he rest in peace. Piccolo stared at the stone with a blank look. Piccolo had a feeling there was more to Gohan's death than the heart virus. He doesn't know why he has the feeling he just does. This whole situation felt wrong, like it was never supposed to happen. Piccolo frowned before letting out a barely noticeable sigh of sadness. Whether his feeling is true or not does not get rid of the fact that Gohan is dead. Will he ever see his friend again? Gohan was the only one to make him crack a smile and feel accepted. Piccolo wondered if he will ever hear his name spoken in that stupid formal way? Will he ever hear the name? Mr. Piccolo. Piccolo stared at the stone in shock. W.H. What, Gohan? Did he really hear him? Mr. Piccolo. The voice repeated in the scene seemed to shatter as Piccolo was brought back to reality. End flashback Mr. Piccolo. The location of the voice caused Piccolo to look down and snarl. It wasn't Gohan who said the name it was his brother Goden. Don't you ever call me that, Piccolo said with a growl. This caused Goden to back away in fright, but why not? Only one person is allowed to call me that and it is definitely not you. Goden looked ready to cry at the imposing figure of Piccolo. He didn't mean to make the green man mad at him. This is when Chi Chi noticed that Godin was with Piccolo and her happy smile immediately turned into a scowl. 
She trudged over to Piccolo ready to give him a piece of her mind. How dare he interact with her child? But before she could get to him there was a noise from a couple feet behind her. She turned around to yell at whoever disrupted her but her voice got caught in her throat when she realized who it was. She wasn't the only one who noticed someone had appeared. Everyone else noticed the presence and all of them broke into smiles at who it was. Well if you call a smirk a smile in Vegeta and Piccolo's case. The person that appeared was none other than Goku. Goten went to his mother's side for comfort when Goku appeared. Goten didn't know who this strange man that looked like him was. He was slightly afraid of the stranger but also confused. Why did the person look like him? Could this man be his father? Goku smiled as he looked at everyone gathered, he really missed them. A lot of them looked to be in shock at his appearance probably wondering if what they are seeing is true, but all of them looked nonetheless happy to see him. After a few moments of silence, Goku decided to take the initiative because everyone else seemed to be in too much shock. Yo! He said with another smile and a wave. That seemed to snap everyone out of their shock. Krillin looked ready to cry. Goku is that really you? Goku nodded towards him. Chi Chi was so happy to see her husband that she was nearly in tears. Trunks, 18, Mirai, and Vegeta just stared at Goku silently. Piccolo looked at Goku then glanced at Goku's side and frowned. Everyone else was smiling at Goku. Well am I going to get a hello or what? Asked Goku with a smile like smirk. At those words Krillin, Yamcha, Puar, and Oolong ran at Goku with a hug while screaming, Goku. Goku just laughed as he returned the hugs, he looked over at Chi Chi and his grin turned into a soft smile. Chi Chi looked back at him with her own smile, I missed you she said loud enough for him to hear. I missed you to Chi Chi. Goku said as he stepped away from Krillin and the others to walk towards his wife. He blinked as he saw something move behind Chi Chi's legs. Stopping, Goku bent down and tilted his head. A head peeked out from behind Chi Chi's legs. Goten looked at the man called Goku from behind his mother. When their eyes met Goten ducked his head behind his mother again in shyness. I think there is a mini-me hiding behind your leg Chi Chi. Goku said as he pointed behind her. Goten poked his head back out, I'm Goten, and I am Goku. Hi, Goku responded back with a grin and a wave. Goten stared blankly at Goku. Chi Chi looked down at her son and smiled as she stepped to the side, come on Goten, and don't be shy. Say hello to your father. Goten stared at Goku a little longer. This man is his father? He seemed to be really nice. With a sudden burst of energy Goten screamed, Daddy as he ran towards Goku. Goku smiled as he picked up Goten and spun around once before placing him on his shoulder. Almost everyone looked at the father-son moment with a smile. The only ones not smiling were 18, Vegeta, and Piccolo. 18 and Vegeta looked bored and slightly sick at the mushy scene, while Piccolo glared angrily at the ground. Piccolo was angry because Gohan wasn't there. He had sort of hoped that when Goku came to the tournament Gohan would as well. But as he looked at Goku and the obvious lack of Gohan, Piccolo began to have that same feeling he had back at Gohan's funeral. There was a feeling that there was something really wrong with the situation. Where is Gohan? Why isn't he here? Goku wouldn't leave Gohan behind would he? No that wouldn't be like Goku, Goku would have found some way to get Gohan to come along. The only thing that Piccolo could come up with as to why Gohan is not with Goku is that Gohan never met up with Goku in the other world. Piccolo's suspicion was correct when Goku decided to open his mouth after everyone calmed down at his appearance and asked, where is Gohan? Everyone's smiles shattered at those words and a heavy sadness seemed to permeate the area. Goku laughed in nervousness as he looked at everyone's sudden shift in mood. Uh, guys what is going on? He tried to make eye contact with someone but every time he looked at someone they would avoid his gaze. Goku frowned and with a serious voice asked, okay what is going on? It wasn't a question this time, Goku was demanding an answer. Piccolo was the one who spoke up, you really don't know. Goku put Goten down before turning to Piccolo, no I don't, and from everyone's reaction it is bad. Goku stared Piccolo straight in the eye, what happened to Gohan? He is dead. Piccolo stated with no emotions. At those words, Goku's world seemed to fall apart, wh. What? He fell to his knees, eyes wide as he stared at nothing. How? When? Was it an enemy? I thought Bojack was the last evil villain to attack. 
Piccolo shook his head, it wasn't an enemy, Gohan didn't die in a battle, if that were the case he would still be with us. Your thoughts are also correct. Bojack was the last villain we faced. Goku looked up at Piccolo from his spot on the ground, if it wasn't an enemy then what was it? A hand on his shoulder caused him to turn his head away from Piccolo. The hand belonged to Krillin who had a sad bitter sweet smile on his face, it was the heart virus Goku. Gohan got it a few months after the Bojack incident, he didn't make it. Goku's eyes dimmed. Gohan got the heart virus. So it is my fault Gohan is dead. Everyone seemed shocked at Goku's words. Don't say that Goku it isn't your fault, Bulma said. Goku got up and glared at Bulma. Everyone flinched not used to seeing Goku with that look on his face. It is my fault. Gohan obviously got that heart virus from me somehow. Goku stared at the ground sadly, I killed my own son. Oh for the love of Dend. Shut the hell up and get over yourself. Goku's head snapped up at the voice, only to look in shock at the owner. What did you say Vegeta? Asked Goku with slightly wide eyes. I said to shut the hell up, it wasn't your fault that the brat died from that stupid virus. You had no control over who got it or not, so get over yourself Kakaro. Be a true Saiyan and it up. Your moping and self-loathing is making me sick. Vegeta said with a huff. Goku stared at Vegeta before a grateful smile lit his face. You are right Vegeta, I had no control over it thank you. Vegeta just looked to the side with a snarl, whatever, I didn't do it for you Kakaro. I just didn't want your moping to affect our fight. I want you at your best when I defeat you in combat. Goku rolled his eyes, sure whatever you say Vegeta. Goku. Said Piccolo in a gruff voice. Yeah. If. Piccolo looked to be choosing his words carefully. If you never knew of Gohan's death, then where is he? I would have thought he would have gone straight to you. Goku gave Piccolo a troubled smile. Gohan died when I was competing in the other world tournament. So I don't know where he is and that worries me. I would think someone in the other world, like King Kai, would have told me Gohan died. Yet no one did. Everyone looked saddened at those words. Some couldn't believe what Goku must be going through to find out that his son is dead, and for quite some years as well. Ahem the noise caused everyone to look at the source, it was Master Roshi's sister Baba. Yes Baba? Asked Goku. I just wanted to tell you Goku that you have only 24 hours here. That is all I can do. So use it wisely. Goku gave Baba a grateful smile, thank you and I will. Baba turned to leave but paused, don't worry about Gohan's whereabouts Goku. Leave it to me. I'll ask around the other world and see if I can find anything. Enjoy your stay while it lasts, you may not get another chance. Goku's smile turned more sincere, you don't know how much that means to me. The witch Baba, turned her head so Goku could see her small but real smile, it is the least I could do. With those parting words she teleported away. With one last smile where Baba used to be, Goku looked at everyone as he picked up Goden. Why don't we go sign up for the tournament? Goden grinned down at his father as he pumped his fists in the air, yeah, let's go. Goku laughed at his youngest son's enthusiasm. Even though Gohan's death affected Goku deeply, he couldn't let it drag him down. His other son needed him now and Goku wanted to enjoy every minute he has with him. He already missed a lot of Goden's childhood, so today he is going to make it up. With these thoughts, Goku motioned everyone else to follow him to the registration area. Goku didn't notice the green eyes from a distance stare at him sadly. The only person out of the group that noticed was Piccolo, but when Piccolo stared at the owner of the green eyes something happened. Go. Gohan? For a moment Piccolo thought he saw Gohan staring back at him, but as rubbed his eyes and looked at the person again it just turned out to be some snot-nosed brown-haired seven-year-old boy with green eyes. Piccolo are you coming or what? Came the obnoxious, in Piccolo's opinion, voice of Goku. Piccolo just huffed as he started walking with the rest of the group. He rubbed his eyes tiredly, did he actually see Gohan? And if so why? Harry stared at Goku sadly from a distance. Harry was able to listen in to Goku and the other Z fighters talk because of his heightened hearing. Harry felt bad for causing Goku so much pain because of his death, yet it wasn't enough for Harry to walk up to Goku and the others and say here I am. Not when the person who betrayed him is in the group. Harry is afraid that if he reveals himself that his betrayer would try to kill him again. Most likely the attempts will fail because Harry doesn't plan to die. 
yet every attempt that would be made will hurt him emotionally. Even though the person betrayed him Harry couldn't help but still care for them. Harry couldn't help but laugh in slight anguish. Is it sad that he is more afraid of the person who betrayed him than Voldemort? Cub are you alright? Yeah I am fine, I just realized how sad it is that I fear the person who betrayed me more than I do Voldemort. Harry said this with a depressed sigh. Remus knelt down in front of Harry, it is not sad that you feel more fear toward them than you do Voldemort. But, no buts Harry, if I was in your place I would feel the exact same way. I would have felt hurt, betrayed, and a little bit of fear if I realized my mom killed me. In a remote area, a small figure is laughing hysterically as he looked into a crystal ball. Soon, Majin Buu will be awoken and all shall fall to his mighty power. Harry hums to himself as he waits in line to sign up for the tournament. Harry looked around trying to find something to entertain him until it was his turn. He would have just talked with Remus, but his father was at one of the concession stands getting a candy apple, yum, candy apple. Harry shook his head to clear his thoughts, he needed to concentrate. Looking ahead of him he could see and hear his old friends and family at the front of the line. From where Harry is it looks like Mirai was the last one to sign up. Well at least it sort of looks like Mirai, but why is he wearing that ridiculous outfit? Not only that, but if it really is him, then why is he here in this time? Could Mirai know of the evil wizard? Wait did Harry just hear Mirai call himself the great Saiyaman? What in the world is going on? Harry listened in on the conversation between Mirai and the two tournament workers. Sorry what was that name again? One of the workers asked Mirai while raising an eyebrow in disbelief. In a deep voice Mirai said the great Saiyaman, silence. Great, Saiyaman, repeated one of the workers slowly. Both workers behind the desk look at Mirai blankly not sure if the person in front of them is joking. That's right. Staring at the weirdly dressed person for another moment, the workers turned to each other shrugged, and then wrote the name down. As long as they get paid, who cares about the crazies they're letting in? Vegeta glared at Mirai, what the hell is up with that name brat? Mirai looked at his father not seeing a problem with it, it is my superhero name, cool isn't it? Vegeta's eyebrow twitched as he stared at his son, I don't know you, he said pointedly, before walking off. Mirai just sighed, he knew his father didn't approve of him running around in this costume but in order to keep his identity secure it was necessary. Next please. One of the workers says in what sounded to be relief. At that point, Harry starts tuning out the talk in front of him until it was his turn. So at least one of his questions was answered about Mirai. So Mirai is dressed like that because he is a superhero huh? Harry giggled. No way would he ever be caught dressed like that. Next. The voice snapped Harry out of his thoughts when he realized it was his turn. Walking up to the tournament workers behind the desk he gave a smile. My name is Harry. One of the workers smiled back and said, ah yes another for the junior division. Harry frowned lightly, junior division? Junior division sir? asked Harry confused. The other worker nodded, it is for everyone under the age of 15. Seeing the slight frown on Harry's face, the worker asked, did you want to participate in the adults tournament? Harry nodded slowly. Supreme Kai had told him to sign up for the tournament, stating it was necessary and Harry had a feeling the junior division wasn't the tournament the Kai was talking about. I am sorry but since you are obviously under 15 we can't sign you up for the adult division. Rules I am afraid. Harry nodded in understanding even if that is not what he wanted. What was he going to do now? Surely the Supreme Kai didn't overlook this factor? But there is still a chance you can participate in the adults tournament though. The worker's voice caught Harry's attention, really? Asked Harry in disbelief. I thought you said you can't sign me up for the adult tournament. Both workers gave Harry humorous smiles, yes it is true we can't sign you up, began one worker as he leaned forward, but tell me boy, do you know what the prize for the junior tournament is? Harry took on a thoughtful look, in all actuality Harry had no clue but if he had to guess, the winner gets money. Both workers laughed lightly, before the one on the right spoke, yes that is true, but it could possibly be more. The winner of the junior division gets a chance to fight Hercule. If the junior champ is able to defeat Hercule they immediately get a spot in the adult tournament. Harry's eyes widened and a smile lit his face, wow really? That is so cool, I didn't know that. Thank you so much, Harry gave them a grateful smile before running off to find Remus. 
The two tournament workers smiled at his retreating form, at least there is one kid in this world with decent manners. One of them murmured. The other hummed in agreement. Next, Harry found Remus underneath the shade of a tree munching on a caramel apple. He then told Remus how he can't participate in the adult tournament unless he wins the junior division and defeats Hercule. It's weird though, began Harry. What is Cub? asked Remus. Harry looked at Remus. Well I can see the point of the junior division, to make it safer and fairer for kids. Since sadly, there are not a lot of strong kids participating with the exception of me, Trunks, and my old dad's mini clone, Godin. Yet they are giving away a spot in the adult division to the junior division champion. Isn't that nullifying the whole point of the junior division? Remus was about to respond when he was cut off by another voice, I can answer that. Remus and Harry turned to the voice to see the Supreme Kai and someone else. Harry smiled, Hi Supreme Kai, what are you doing here? The Supreme Kai gave a smile in return, Hello Harry, and please call me Shin while we are at the tournament. Seeing Harry's confused look, the now named Shin elaborated, I as well as my bodyguard here Koibito, Shin said pointing to the towering figure next to him, are participating in the adult tournament and we don't want anyone to know who we truly are. At least not yet. Remus and Harry shook their head in understanding. Harry asked, You said you can answer the question I had earlier? Shin nodded, Yes and I will tell you as we head towards the waiting area. The four of them start walking towards the waiting area. Now you remember how I said you weren't supposed to die? Harry nodded with a wince still not completely accepting of that bit of knowledge. Well if you didn't die then there would have been no spot in the adult tournament for the junior champion. Harry's eyes widened in understanding seeing this Shin continued. Yes I tweaked the rules so you are able to participate in the adult tournament. It is necessary for you to be in it, so you better win got it. If Shin didn't have a silly grin on his face and didn't wink at him childishly, Harry might have thought the Kai was threatening him. Harry knew that winning the junior tournament wouldn't be too hard, the only competition there was Trunks and Godin. So giving a silly grin in return, Harry responded with, Yes sir. Remus throughout this conversation had remained silent with a thoughtful expression, Shin? Remus asked drawing the Kai's attention. Wouldn't people think keeping a spot open in the adult division for the junior division champ a little strange? I mean what tournament allows a little kid to participate in an adult tournament, wouldn't there be an obvious strength difference between adult and child? Shin nodded, normally yes, but that is why the junior division champ has to defeat Hercule in order to get the spot. Almost everyone watching and or participating in the tournament actually believes there is no way Hercule will lose to a kid. So in their opinion there is no actual spot reserved in the adult tournament for the junior champion. Did that clear everything up? Remus nodded as all of them stopped at a fork in the road. One way was towards the locker room for the participants and the other is for the people watching the tournament. Shin nodded to Remus and Harry, well this is where we split up for now. I will talk to you when the adult competition starts ok Harry. Harry nodded, and with a smile and a wave goodbye Shin and Koibito walked off toward the locker room. Remus and Harry watched the Kai and his bodyguard for a few moments, before turning to each other. Well I guess I will see you later Remus, Harry said with a wave as he started to walk towards the locker room. Harry was stopped by Remus's voice, you don't have to do this cub. Harry turned to look at Remus in confusion, what? You don't have to do this, just say the word and we can leave. Harry gave Remus a soft smile, you know I can't do that. I gave my word to Supreme Kai that I would help. Yes you can. Remus growled lightly, screw the Supreme Kai, you shouldn't have to go through this. He can go find some other bloody person to do his dirty work. Harry tilted his head, have to go through what? He asked innocently. Remus walked up to Harry and placed his hand under Harry's chin to force Harry to look in his eyes. Don't try to act innocent or oblivious. You know what I am talking about. The physical and more importantly the emotional pain you are going to go through because of this, help, you will be providing. Harry put a reassuring hand on Remus's arm and smiled, don't worry dad, I can handle it. I am a big kid now. Remus stared at Harry intently before taking a step away from Harry and sighing as he put a hand to his temple to try to relieve an oncoming headache. This is not some pull-up commercial Harry. You being able to use the restroom on your own is not the same as you putting yourself in physical and emotional stress trying to ignore the pain and suffering of being around old friends and family while keeping the fact that you are alive away from them. Remus. Remus continued on his rant, 
which by the way I am sure you realize they will probably find out about you before you can defeat this evil wizard who is bent on destroying the world if not the universe. Remus. And if by some ungodly chance you manage to avoid such a confrontation the emotional pain to that point will be mind-boggling. Remus. Remus ignored Harry too into his rant to stop, all this pain and suffering and it is not even calculating the evil wizard himself. I know you are powerful cub but we don't know how strong this wizard is. You might get hurt or even killed. All because of that bloody Supreme Kai. A child shouldn't have to bear this kind of burden. Remus. Harry said forcefully gaining Remus's attention. What? I need to do this. Spoke Harry as he stared at Remus seriously. But Harry. Remus was cut off by Harry's hand. Please stop and let me finish. I need to do this. I can't allow innocence to get hurt if I can stop it. Yes every moment I am around my old friends and family it hurts. A lot. Yet I know I can get through this. Cub, whispered Remus with sad eyes. His eyes immediately widened in surprise as he felt Harry hug him around the waist. I know I can get through this because you are here daddy. Harry spoke softly but Remus could hear him clearly. I know that if they find out about me or not you will always be here. I know I will never be alone and that you will never abandon me willingly. Remus bent down so Harry and he were eye level, son, are you sure want to go through with this? Yes. Remus closed his eyes and sighed for what seemed to be the millionth time that day. Pulling Harry into a hug Remus murmured, I am sorry for going off on you like that cub. I calm I just worry about you. I don't like seeing you get hurt physically or mentally. Harry's responded by returning the hug with a sincere smile, there is no need to apologize I am not angry at your outburst. That was the truth Harry wasn't angry at Remus's rant, actually Harry was touched. Remus's rant only proved to Harry how much Remus cared for him. To be so concerned with his well-being made Harry feel, special, no more than that, loved. Remus stood up and then looked at Harry, well you better get going, I am going to go find a seat. I will be cheering for you. Good luck cub. Harry beamed a smile at Remus, thank you. Harry turned and jogged a few steps away from Remus towards the locker room and then stopped all of a sudden. A second later he was back at Remus with another hug nearly plowing Remus over. I love you. Remus quickly recovered from the hug attack and wrapped his arms around Harry returning the hug. Love you too cub, now go kick some butt. Harry sent one last smile before heading towards the locker room. Remus watched Harry for a moment before walking away with a content look. Even though he hated what is to come. Remus knew he couldn't do anything about it. Once Harry put his mind to something nothing will stand in his way. So Remus must content himself with the fact that Harry will not go through this alone. Harry was almost to the locker room when he was stopped by a brown haired woman with a microphone and a blonde haired man with a camera. Hi. Said the woman in a sickeningly sweet voice as she shoved the microphone in Harry's face. Where are you from? Harry stared at her like a deer caught in headlights, uh. The lady smiled ignoring his discomfort, come on sweetie don't be shy, and tell us where you are from. Harry inched away from her and glanced behind her to see the camera the man is holding pointed at him. Um. Harry was nervous, he didn't know what to say. He disliked being the center of attention like this, he doesn't want to answer the scary lady's questions, he just wants to be left alone. The cameraman seeing Harry's discomfort told the brown haired reporter with a small laugh, I think you are scaring him. The reporter turns to her cameraman and glares, shut up. The reporter frowns slightly as she turned back to the little kid she is trying to interview. She knew a lot of people, especially kids get camera shy, but this is ridiculous. She decided to try a different question. So hun, she began, are you participating in the junior tournament? Harry's eyes kept shifting from one side to the other trying to find an escape as he stepped away from the reporter again. Leave me alone please. Harry screamed in his mind, wishing he can say out loud. This is ridiculous, Harry told himself, I can fight megalomaniacs but I can't answer simple questions to a reporter. Before Harry could reprimand himself even more the camera the blonde haired man was holding exploded. While the reporter and cameraman were freaking out, Harry let out a sigh of relief glad that the interrogation was over. Harry looked around trying to find who blew up the camera because he had a feeling it didn't blow up on its own. Overlooking another news reporter, a blonde haired woman, and her cameraman, Harry spotted Piccolo who was looking at him from the corner of his eye. Harry had a feeling that Piccolo was the one who destroyed the camera. 
Harry tilted his head in confusion, why did Piccolo do that? Does he know the truth? thought Harry worriedly, does he know who I am? Harry paused before shaking his head. What am I so worried about? He couldn't possibly know the truth. I haven't even talked to him or any of the others, so he can't know. So that brings Harry back to the original question, why did Piccolo do that? Harry couldn't think of an answer. Shrugging Harry decided the answer to that question wasn't worth dwelling on. All that matters is that Harry was grateful and to show that he gave Piccolo a smile before running off towards the locker room. Piccolo twitched in annoyance at the sheer stupidity that seems to be Goku. Does the guy ever use his brain? Come on. The guy should at least have enough sense not to talk so freely about coming back from the dead not only to complete strangers, but to strangers who happen to be recording every word he is saying. Doesn't Goku realize that even though it is normal for him to come back from the dead that it isn't for everyone else? Of course the idiot doesn't realize it. Sometimes Goku is too naive and oblivious about the world for his own good. Piccolo glared at Goku before turning his eyes on the camera the brown-haired man held. Concentrating a bit of key, Piccolo released it with a flash of his eyes, causing the camera to explode. The blonde-haired reporter and the brown-haired man started to freak out, but Piccolo ignored them. Piccolo glared at Goku one more time before looking around. God when did he become Goku's babysitter? Goku is barely here for a few hours and he is already causing problems. Piccolo was going to head towards the locker room when something caught his attention from the corner of his eye. A good distance away there was another reporter but instead of having blonde hair she had brown. It looks like she is questioning somebody too. From the looks of it the one being questioned was trying to get away. Slightly curious Piccolo looked at who was being questioned and that is when his eyes widened. Is it really? Piccolo thought. Gohan? But just like earlier that day, when Piccolo blinked his eyes Gohan's form was replaced with a brown-haired green-eyed boy. Not only that but it was the same boy as before too. What is wrong with me? Piccolo growled to himself. Why do I keep seeing Gohan? Silence was his only answer. Growling once more in a fit of anger, Piccolo glared at the camera pointed at the brown-haired boy until it blew up. Even though it didn't get rid of his anger completely, Piccolo at least felt a little better. Looking at the brown-haired kid one last time he was able to see a grateful smile adorn the kid's face before the kid ran off. For some strange reason Piccolo felt any remaining anger he had drain out of him when he saw that smile. Piccolo also felt like a weight was lifted off his shoulders for a few moments before it was ruined by Goku's annoying voice as he caught up with him. Wow Piccolo I didn't know you liked destroying cameras that much. What? Piccolo asked in a gruff but confused tone. Goku looked at Piccolo with amusement, you're smiling. Piccolo paused and that is when he realized he is smiling, which causes him to frown. What the hell caused him to smile? He didn't even realize it until Goku pointed it out. Piccolo hasn't smiled since Gohan's death. Goku started to whine, come on Piccolo don't go back to Mr. Grumpy Face now. Piccolo ignored him and stormed off to find some secluded area to wait in until everyone finished getting ready. After getting ready, Harry exited the locker room and started heading towards the waiting area. A flash of green caught his eye, which turned out to be Piccolo who was leaning against a wall. But Piccolo wasn't alone he was surrounded by two of the tournament workers and as Harry looked closer he saw one of the workers holding a medical kit. Curious at what was going on Harry walked closer until he was close enough to hear what was going on but far enough not to draw immediate attention to himself. The shorter of the two workers asked in a kind voice towards Piccolo. Sir is there anything we can do for you? You are looking a tad green. Piccolo stared at the two workers in shock, they can't be serious. But when Piccolo looked into their eyes his own eyes widened in disbelief, they are. Harry covered his mouth to stifle his snickering. Harry knew he shouldn't be laughing but it is hard not to. The workers sincerely believe Piccolo is sick. Not only that, but Piccolo's expression at being asked that question was too funny. After getting over his shock, Piccolo blushed in slight embarrassment but mostly anger before finally screaming, go away, I always look like this. The men stepped back in fright and screamed, sorry, please don't hurt us, before running away in fear from the fuming green man. Harry couldn't take it anymore and burst out laughing, oh how he missed Mr. Piccolo. Piccolo turned his head sharply towards the sound of laughter, a snarl ready to let loose on the one he knew was laughing at him. When his eyes landed on the owner of the laughter, his snarl died in his throat and his eyes widened. Why does this keep happening? 
thought Piccolo as he stared at a laughing Gohan. I am sick of this. It is time I do something about it. Piccolo was about to take a step towards the still laughing Gohan, when Mirai in his stupid Saiyaman costume stepped in front of Piccolo blocking him from his intended target. Piccolo glared at Mirai and growled, what do you want? Mirai's sweat dropped at the unexpected anger directed towards him. Lifting up his hands in a sign of peace he spoke hurriedly, whoa, calm down Piccolo, I just wanted to hang out with you until the others are ready. Piccolo stared at Mirai, before glancing over Mirai's shoulder to see if Gohan was still there. Piccolo frowned, Gohan wasn't there anymore, looking back at Mirai, Piccolo grunted, whatever. As Mirai began to talk, Piccolo leaned against the wall and folded his arms, ignoring him. Harry let out a breath of relief from the bush he was hiding behind. Luckily Mirai popped up when he did, because Harry had a feeling Piccolo was heading towards him. Why Piccolo was about to head towards him, Harry could only guess. It was to either shut up an annoying unknown kid, in Piccolo's opinion, or Piccolo was going to confront Harry because he suspects something. Harry hopes Piccolo's reasoning was the former because Harry had a feeling if Piccolo was the least bit suspicious of him, Harry would immediately break and tell him everything. Piccolo was his first and true friend. Yes Piccolo wasn't the nicest person in the world, but Harry didn't mind. Piccolo just had his own way of showing his affection and no one can doubt the loyalty he shows once he is your friend. Piccolo cared enough about Harry to die for him. If it was anyone else, Harry could probably keep his past identity a secret, but not Piccolo. Harry sighed as he got up from behind the bush he was hiding from when he saw Piccolo and Mariah leave. It looks like it is time to head towards the waiting room. Harry walks down the long tunnel leading to the waiting area. Looking around he saw various fighters and reporters, young and old. He could see Goku and most of the other adults speaking to who appeared to be the announcer of the tournament. Harry wasn't paying complete attention but it sounded like they knew the announcer. Harry looked and saw young Trunks and Goden looking bored a few feet away from the adults. Goden, Harry didn't know what to think of him, it came as quite a shock to learn he has a brother. Even if he didn't listen in to the conversation with his old friends and family earlier, it was obvious Goden was Goku's son, he looked almost exactly like Goku. Harry's eyes saddened as he looked at his healthy and, even if he was bored at the moment, happy brother. What is it about Goden that makes his mother love him but not Harry? Harry can't help but feel a little jealous of his brother. Harry is human after all, well kind of. Harry wasn't angry or mad at his brother though, actually Harry was angry at himself. Harry obviously did something wrong to warrant his old mother's hatred, but what? Was it because he preferred training over studying? Godin is allowed to participate in the tournament so the reason can't be fighting can it? So what is it about Godin that makes him special? Harry decided to go over to talk to Godin and Trunks. Even though Harry knew he was going to put his identity at risk, he didn't care at the moment. He was too curious about what his brother was like and as long as Harry pretended to be a normal human child participating in a tournament he should be fine. Hi. Said Harry getting Trunks and Godin's attention. My name is Harry, what is yours? Trunks and Godin stared at Harry as if they are not sure Harry was actually talking to them. Once they realized he was, Godin took the initiative. With a large grin Godin said, Hiya, my name is Godin, pointing to the lavender-haired kid next to him Godin continued, and this is Trunks. Trunks gave a slight wave in Harry's direction, yo. Godin hopped up and down like a kid on sugar high, which he probably was. Hey hey hey, are you going to participate in the junior tournament too? Harry nodded. Godin continued in his hypertone, are you strong? I hope you're strong, because I want to have as much fun as I can and that will only happen if I fight against people who are strong. Harry was about to open his mouth to respond when Trunks cut him off, don't be ridiculous Godin. The only strong fighters in the junior tournament are you and me. Harry's eyebrow twitched slightly in annoyance, excuse me, but for your information I am quite strong. Godin grinned in excitement, really? Trunks on the other hand looked at Harry in disbelief, yeah right, I bet I can beat you with one finger. Harry gave Trunks a level stare, I guess we will find out in the ring. Before Trunks could say anything else, cheering from all around the three broke out catching their attention. They saw Hercule come out of a parked airplane giving the peace sign. Yeah, line up if you want an autograph from the greatest fighter ever, cuz I am not charging for the first fifty. Ha 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 ha. Hercule said arrogantly. 
The crowd starts cheering even louder except for the Z fighters and Harry. After a while the cheering died down and a tournament worker stepped forward and starts explaining the tournament and the rules. He tells the audiences there are 194 people participating in the adult tournament and that there are only 16 spots open. The worker went on to explain that according to the rules the defending champion immediately gets a spot and that another spot is reserved for the junior division champion. Immediately adult fighters began to protest. What the hell? A spot in the adults tournament is reserved for a kid? What kind of crap is that? You have got to be joking. Formal protest. If that doesn't work in formal protest. Silence. Screamed the tournament worker, silencing everyone. If you let me finish, you may not be so angry. The tournament worker continued on explaining that the only way the junior division champion can participate in the adult tournament is if he or she defeats Hercule. Immediately all the adults who were protesting earlier smirked, happily thinking another spot is open to fill, because there is no way a kid will be able to defeat Hercule. Seeing the content looks on most of the adults' faces, the tournament worker decided to wrap up his speech by saying the adults will all get a number and wait in a line to punch a punching bag. The top 14 to score the highest get to participate in the tournament. The 15th highest score gets the possibility in fighting in the tournament depending on if the junior division champion wins or loses against Hercule. Now, finish the tournament worker if Hercule will come out and test the punching machine and show everyone why he is considered the defending champion. As Hercule came out and started to pose in front of the cameras, Harry decided to look around. Harry spots Mirai with a kid on his shoulders. From the looks of it Mirai is helping the kid see. A glint of something caught Harry's attention from the corner of his eye. There he saw a long blonde-haired male with a camera take pictures. Looking in the direction the camera was pointing at Harry frowned as he saw Mirai wiping his glasses off and placing them back on his face. Even though Harry didn't know exactly what was going on, what he saw didn't make Harry happy. Harry had a feeling Mirai wanted his identity a secret and even though Harry was hiding from Mirai. Harry still considered Mirai a friend and Harry has never liked seeing his friends in danger. With a frown Harry let loose some energy causing all cameras in the immediate area to explode. Who knew the same technique Piccolo used would be so useful? Feeling eyes on him Harry turned to see Piccolo staring at him from a few feet away. For some reason Harry couldn't help but smile and wink, before turning back to watch Hercule pout because all of the cameras were destroyed. Piccolo was annoyed with the idiot Hercule. This has to stop, he thought. Piccolo was about to destroy the cameras in order to move the tournament along but before he can the cameras exploded on their own. His eyes widened slightly before discreetly looking around for the culprit in the corner of his eyes. He didn't know who it was for sure, but for some reason his eyes went to the brown-haired boy standing by Godin and Trunks. For what seemed the hundredth time that day Piccolo swore he saw Gohan in the kid's place. Piccolo turned his head to fully look at the kid. The kid feeling eyes on him turned to Piccolo with a smile and a small wink and that was enough to cause Piccolo to widen his eyes and hold his breath in shock. This was the first time Piccolo saw the kid so close face to face and now Piccolo realized why he kept seeing Gohan in this kid's place. If this kid had black hair and black eyes instead of brown hair and green eyes, he would have looked like an exact replica of Gohan. But is it really him? questioned Piccolo and then he narrowed his eyes, there is one way to find out. Piccolo then did something he hasn't done in years. He searched for the mental bond he had with Gohan. If he found it and it wasn't broken, that means Gohan is still alive and the kid he is looking at may be Gohan. If the bond is broken that means Gohan is dead and the kid in front of him is just a random kid who happens to look like his deceased friend. Piccolo found the bond, and it wasn't broken. Piccolo felt hope well in his chest, now it was time to see if it is him. Opening the link Piccolo asked, Gohan is that you? The brown haired boy's back stiffened and Piccolo saw the kid's eyes widen in shock. Piccolo bet he looked scary with a smile on his face but he didn't care, he found Gohan and that is all that mattered. Harry stiffened as he heard Piccolo's voice in his head, even though he has his mind protected with barriers from outside interference. Harry didn't realize the bond he had with Piccolo carried over into his new life so he made no barriers for it. Harry could now feel Piccolo's presence within his own mind but surprisingly instead of being scared, Harry felt happy. Relaxing Harry smiled, hello Mr. Piccolo. Harry felt happiness, confusion, anger, sadness, and a variety of other emotions coming from Piccolo. Kid. Piccolo whispered mentally. How are you alive? 
Why do you look like that? Why didn't tell us you're alive? Why are you here? Harry sighed sadly, it is kind of hard to explain right now. But, Piccolo was cut off by Harry. If you wait until after the junior tournament, I promise to explain everything. Harry could feel Piccolo give a mental sigh. Fine. Will all the kids participating in the junior division please step forward, your tournament is about to begin. Please follow the designated worker and listen to the instructions given. Good luck to all of you, the voice of a tournament worker said calm but loud. As Harry was led away he said one more thing to Piccolo, please don't tell anyone else I am here. You will understand why after the junior tournament. Please can you do that for me Mr. Piccolo? As Piccolo watched Harry's retreating form he whispered softly both mentally and out loud, sure kid. Even though Piccolo could tell Gohan improved greatly in the mental power, Piccolo was still better at it because he had countless more years of experience in that area. Piccolo could feel an inner turmoil and an underlining fear of being found out from within the deep recesses of Gohan's mind. Piccolo didn't know why Gohan was afraid of anyone finding out who he truly was. Or how the kid is even alive, but Piccolo trusts his friend and knows Gohan wouldn't keep secrets unless there was a reason. Piccolo smirked. The tournament might not be so boring after all. Harry can describe the junior tournament so far in three words. Boring as hell. Harry should have said screw participating and sat as a spectator with his father. At least then he could have walked away from this drawn out, eye gauging boredom of a tournament. But no, he just had to participate. Every person he faced so far was so pitifully weaker than him, that he felt like a bully. To the spectators, besides his father and Piccolo, every fight appeared to be close. Harry didn't want to stand out just yet, so he forced himself to fight at the same level as each of his opponents. This, Harry reflected to himself, was very difficult. Luckily the junior tournament was drawing to a close with only a few more fights left. Harry stood up from his spot on the floor when his name was called. Finally, thought Harry, maybe now the tournament will get interesting. His next opponent, Trunks. From the stands Goku and the others watch as Trunks and another kid walk into the ring. Alright. Just one more fight and then it will be Trunks and Goten's fight, exclaimed Krillin. Thank Den for that, growled Vegeta. I can't take much more of this. Goku gave Vegeta a silly smile, come on Vegeta it's not that bad, I mean sure it's not the most entertaining tournament, but that is just because our sons are stronger. Vegeta just grunted as he looked down at his son who got in a stance. Vegeta then turned his attention to his wife who was a few rows away from him. Hey woman, get me a sandwich. Bulma growled and twitched in annoyance. Get your own damn sandwich. I am watching Trunks fight. Why? asked Vegeta. There is no point, it's obvious our son is going to win. Bulma glared up at Vegeta, be that as it may, I still want to watch my baby fight. So again I say, get your own damn sandwich. Vegeta growled at her, wench. Bulma's face went red, but before she could lash out in anger, Piccolo interrupted her. As much as I adore you two bickering, Piccolo's tone was filled with sarcasm you should all seriously watch the fight. Everyone turned to Piccolo with confusion, none were paying attention to Trunks' fight up to this point because of Bulma and Vegeta's spat, and besides it wasn't like they were missing anything important. Why? asked Krillin, because Trunks' opponent is toying with him. Everyone looked down at the ring in various degrees of shock. Indeed Trunks' opponent appears to be dodging every blow with ease Trunks. I can't believe it, murmured Mirai in awe. Vital looked at the people beside her. She knew Mirai, his family, and his friends were definitely not normal, one of them was green for Den's sake. If Vital was something she was curious and stubborn, and she will persevere until she gets what she want. At the moment she wants to know everything about Mirai and everyone connected to him. She had a feeling there is more to him than just his Saiyaman thing. Mirai and the other's reaction to what is happening in the ring confused her. Why were they so shocked that Trunks is having trouble? They didn't really expect the kid to breeze through the tournament easily did they? Turning to Mirai, Vital asked, Why is it so shocking that your brother is having trouble? The tournament isn't supposed to be easy. Mirai bit his lower lip trying to find the right response. Even though Vital knew about him being Saiyaman, she didn't really know much else. She knows he is stronger than average and that he could fly. He was forced to teach her in order to keep his Saiyaman identity a secret, but she doesn't know any of his other secrets. Like the fact he is actually a future version of his brother. 
My father trained trunks, and the phrase, going easy, isn't in my father's dictionary. So it comes to a surprise that trunks is having trouble. Vital paled slightly as she remembered Vegeta shattering the punching bag earlier. Yeah now she is starting to understand why the others were shocked. The kid would probably be no match for her but in the junior tournament he should be the strongest considering his father trained him. But if Trunks was trained by his father and losing, then how strong is his opponent and how come he didn't stand out earlier? As Trunks and Harry were walking towards the ring for the match, Harry was deep in thought. He needed a plan. Obviously the plan's objective will be to win the match against Trunks. There is no choice in that matter or else Supreme Kai would probably have a hissy fit. Harry is trying to figure out how to win, he could a battle on the same level as Trunks or B pretend to be a pompous kid over analyzing his own abilities, and then when Trunks has his guard down kick him out of the ring. B would probably be the quickest and it won't reveal too much of his abilities, to the spectators it would just look like Trunks let his guard down and Harry got a lucky shot in. Harry stopped in the middle of the ring and turned to his opponent droning out the announcer's voice. Plan B don't fail me now, thought Harry. Harry and Trunks stared at each other. Well it was more Harry staring at Trunks because Trunks was looking at the sky in boredom. I am going to beat you, Harry shouted with a dramatic finger point at Trunks. Trunks glanced at Harry out of the corner of his eye then looked at the sky again with a huff, yeah right. Harry growled in false anger in order to send off an image of a kid trying to act tough when in reality they aren't. The announcer raised his right hand in the air, the other hand clutching the mic. Begin, yelled the announcer as he brought down his right arm in a downward slice. I'll show you, vowed Harry as he charged Trunks with a fist pulled back. With a look of determination Harry released the punch at which Trunks dodged with ease. Harry brought up his other fist and tried to hit Trunks who sidestepped the punch with a smirk. Huh? You call those punches? A baby will be more of a challenge than you, taunted Trunks. Growling again, Harry launched himself at Trunks flailing his arms at Trunks, not actually trying to hit him but to keep up the appearance of an inexperienced kid way over his head. Trunks yawned as he brought up a finger to block each of the punches, this is a waste of my time. Harry internally smiled. Good, he thought, Trunks is letting his guard down, I need to time this correctly. With a yell Harry released a final punch which no surprise to him was blocked with a finger. Their fist and finger stayed in that position. Harry breathed heavily to make it look like his onslaught tired him. Trunks on the other hand just yawned again. Trunks frowned at Harry, I thought this battle will be a little interesting considering how far you got but I guess I was wrong. Harry paused his deep breathing with a smile, you aren't wrong. Trunks raised an eyebrow in disbelief and then shook his head, no I am pretty sir, Trunks was cut off by a surprisingly fast kick to the head. The force of the kick sent Trunks close to the edge of the ring. Trunks picked himself off the ground and wiped his lip to get rid of the small trickle of blood. Trunks stared at his opponent in shock. Trunks knew that if he wasn't as strong as he was that kick would have easily taken him outside the ring. Where the hell did that come from? He knew if he kept his guard up he would have been able to block that kick but the way his opponent was battling they shouldn't have been able to produce that kind of kick. Trunks narrowed his eyes at his grinning opponent who was shifting his weight side to side fists up with a hop. A few moments later Trunks eyes widened in shock which morphed into fury when he realized his opponent was purposely pretending to be weak. Trunks screamed in anger as he launched himself at his opponent. Trunks will show this jerk not to undermine him. The kid doesn't know who he is messing with. No one belittles him in a fight. Even though Harry was smiling as he looked at Trunks getting up from the kick, internally he was frowning. Trunks was stronger than he thought, that kick was supposed to send him out of the ring. Harry sighed internally nothing is going to be easy in his life is it? He looked at Trunks again only to sweat drop, Trunks was charging at him with a scream. Harry's reflexes were what saved him when Trunks tried to punch him hard in the face. Then a quick tilt of the head back allowed Harry to dodge the kick. Harry looked at Trunks' face as he dodged another punch. Seeing the fury, Harry couldn't help but think maybe he should have went with plan A, before choosing plan B he should have taken into account Trunks' temper, he is the son of Vegeta and Bulma. If only he was fighting Goten then plan B would have worked because even if it would have failed he wouldn't have a pissed off Demi Saiyan on his hands. The reason he knew Goten wouldn't be pissed like Trunks was because if Goten acted just as much as he looked like Goku, then he wouldn't be angry instead he probably would have been happy for the challenge. 
Harry sighed as he flipped backwards his right foot connecting with Trunks' chin sending Trunks into the air. Well, Harry thought to himself, no use crying over spilt milk. With that Harry jumped into the air to get above Trunks and before Trunks could react kicked him roughly in the back sending Trunks into the ground. Harry landed gracefully on the ground with a flip after using Trunks' back as a springboard. Harry smirked outwardly at Trunks' down form. With the most annoying voice he could muster Harry repeated what Trunks said not long ago, Ha, huh, you call those punches? I bet Godin will be more of a challenge than you? Trunks clenched his fists and bowed his head as he shakily got up. It was a known fact by the Z fighters that Trunks and Godin have a similar rivalry to that of Vegeta and Goku with the exception theirs is friendlier. But even though it is friendlier their desire to outdo each other is just as strong as their father's. So being told by your opponent, that your rival will be more of a challenge than you can really set a person off. That is exactly what happened to Trunks. Shut up! screamed Trunks as he let loose a powerful key blast, uncaring of the fact that he is facing a human, who other than showing great hand to hand didn't have any other special abilities. All Trunks cared about was wiping that smirk off the jerk's face and showing that he is more of a challenge to his opponent than Godin. Harry's eyes widened in shock as the blast headed towards him. He didn't think he pissed off Trunks that much. Harry lifted his right hand in front of him slowly gathering key to it. Harry will have to meet the blast head on because he realized in Trunks' state of mind that if he moved then the people behind him in the stands will get hurt or possibly worse. As the key blast hit Harry's hand causing a small explosion of dust and debris, Harry knew that the fight had to end now. Remus had to bite his lip to stop himself from screaming out Harry's name. He knew that Harry will survive the blast. Not only could he feel him but the blast wasn't nearly strong enough to injure Harry badly. Even though Remus knew Harry was fine it still doesn't stop your heart from getting caught in your throat when you see your son caught in an explosion. Seeing his son appear behind the purple haired boy, Remus vowed he and his son were going to have a long talk. Remus was too old for this. Everyone was in various degrees of shock when they saw the blast trunks made in anger hit the kid causing an explosion. From their angle none of them saw the brown haired kid form key into his hands all they saw was the kid raising his hand in a futile attempt to protect himself. Vegeta please tell me our son didn't just throw a key blast at a human child. Vegeta looked at his wife, he did. Bulma turned to Vegeta in anger, I told you to tell me he didn't. Well it is kind of hard to do that when there is evidence right in front of us that our son just blasted the kid into oblivion, Vegeta shrugged and then smirked. Well at least he won, that is my boy. Vegeta. What? Snapped Vegeta, it was the brat's fault for angering our son like that, and you don't mess with Saiyans. Vital who was not far from Vegeta was in shock. Turning to Mirai she stuttered, D, D, did, your brother Ju, just? Keeping his eyes on the arena, Mirai responded, I don't know. The rest of the Z fighters looked solemnly at the arena. The rest of the spectators were in various stages of confusion and shock. All of you stop being so dramatic the kid is fine, Piccolo stated with a grunt. Um. Piccolo I don't think being blown up constitutes as being fine, Krillin stated timidly and then squeaked in fear as Piccolo glared at him. So the brown haired kid that just appeared behind trunks is just a figment of my imagination, Piccolo stated blandly. What? Everyone looked at where trunks was and true to Piccolo's word the trunk's opponent was behind him, clothes singe, but other than that looked unharmed. They watched the events that followed in shock, who was this kid? Goku who was surprisingly quiet through the match grinned at the sudden turn of events, who knew this fight would turn out so cool. Goku's grin formed into shock as he saw the unsuspecting trunks get kicked in the back with enough force to knock him out of the ring. Wow, Goku thought, never thought I would see this happen, who is this kid? Goku looked at the brown haired boy called Harry, why does he look so familiar? Harry let out a slow breath relaxing his muscles and closed his eyes. The arena was silent, what was just witnessed blew a lot of the spectators minds, they were sure the brown haired kid got hit with that weird blast and from the explosion that followed the kid shouldn't be alive, but he was. I come I, stammered the announcer in shock. He knew things would be a lot more entertaining with Goku and his friends participating but he thought the main tournament would be brought back to life not the junior tournament as well, well the purple haired kid was a part of Goku's group. That snapped the announcer out of his shock, of course Goku. The announcer chuckled that explained everything. I can't believe it, 
what a turn of events, the winner is Harry. A little more silence, and the crowd went wild, who cares if what just happened shouldn't have been possible, it turned the boring junior tournament into something enjoyable. The announcer smiled and then looked at where the purple-haired kid was kicked out of the ring. Other than a few bruises and a hurt pride it looked like the kid was okay, at the moment one of the other contestants was talking to him. Knowing the medics will look at the kid the announcer turned his attention to the winner of the match. As he walked over to the brown-haired kid he noticed the singed clothing. Hey are you alright? He asked concerned, he didn't know how the kid pulled that stunt off but it looked like he didn't come out of it unscathed. The boy opened his eyes and looked at him with a smile, yes sir I am. Do you want to take a break before the final match? The kid shook his head, no I'm okay we can begin right now. Are you sure? The announcer asked surprised the kid didn't want to take a breather. The kid tilted his head as if listening to something, narrowed his eyes and then responded, yes I am sure, but can we start soon? I want this over with soon. The announcer just blinked and then shook his head with a slight chuckle, kids and their impatience, okay I'll go get the other contestant and then we can begin. As the announcer turned to walk towards the other contestant who was talking to the purple haired kid, he heard the brown haired boy Harry murmur, thanks. Trunks. Someone yelled. Trunks groaned with a hand to his head as he got up from the ground after being knocked out of the ring. He, he can't believe it he actually lost, and to someone who wasn't Godin. Trunks. The person yelled again yet it was closer this time. Trunks looked in the direction of the voice to see Godin come to a stop next to him. Trunks are you alright? Yeah, I'm okay, man, I can't believe I lost, growled Trunks as he clenched his hands into fists. What happened out there Trunks? He caught me off guard. How? He pretended to be weaker than he really was. Why would he do that Trunks? Godin asked confused. Trunks looked at Godin seriously, I don't really know, but listen Godin he is a lot stronger than he looks. Godin tilted his head like he was remembering something. Well he did say he was strong when we talked to him earlier. So it is kind of your fault for underestimating him. Trunks. Go super. Godin stepped back in shock what? He screeched unknowingly drawing the attention of Harry who was talking to the announcer. Harry titled his head to listen in. Your brother said. Trunks grabbed Godin's shoulders, who cares what my brother said, that jerk needs to lose and lose badly, do it Godin. But, but, please Godin. Godin sighed, okay, but when I get yelled at I am blaming it on you. Harry who was listening and narrowed his eyes. It looks like he will need to wrap up the next fight quickly before Godin can go super. Thanks, Trunks said while releasing Godin's shoulders, hearing a shout they saw the announcer walking towards them obviously trying to get Godin's attention. Kick his butt. Godin smiled, will do. Okay is everyone ready for the final match? Asked the announcer. The crowd screamed in approval. Alright remember whoever wins gets a chance to fight Hercule and if by some chance they defeat the champion they will participate in the adults tournament? Godin? Harry? You ready? Begin? Godin crouched fists clenched about to transform when he saw his opponent charge him, then suddenly disappear. Wah. That was all Godin was able to get out before he was punched in the gut harshly the force sending him back until he was forcibly stopped with an elbow to the back of the head. He was falling to the ground dazed from the speed of the attack when he was kicked in the side hard enough to be flung out of the ring. The arena was silent, even the announcer stared in shock at how quickly the battle ended. Most of the Z fighters and Goku stared down at the arena in shock, who was this kid? Piccolo looked at, Harry, he heard what Trunks and Godin had said and with his ears he could hear a pin drop in a room full of chattering people. So when he heard about how Godin was planning on going super he knew from the expression on Harry's face that he heard as well. So he wasn't that surprised at what Harry did. Hopefully the fight with Hercule will go just as quickly, he really wanted to talk to the kid. The, the winner is Harry, silence like before. Harry ignoring everything but the black haired boy rubbing his head, walked over. Godin sensing someone coming close looked up to see Harry. The serious expression on Harry's face caused Godin to gulp, he already beaten him and so quickly too, what did he want? Godin was caught off guard by the hand that appeared in front of him. Slowly he grabbed it and looked back at Harry who grinned down at him, sorry about that. The brown haired boy said to him, but I knew if I allowed you to do whatever you were going to do I might not have won. Godin blankly stared at Harry as he was helped up, still in shock by losing so quickly as well as being helped by his strong opponent. 
Strong, Godin grinned. He now has someone other than Trunks that can spar with him. Not only that, he seemed nice too. The crowd seeing this act of sportsmanship went wild. It's okay. That was fun, we should fight each other again sometime, Godin chimed. Harry blinked and then smiled. Sure, and next time I will let you do whatever you were going to do. Hey, later, do you want to get some ice cream? My treat and trunks can come too. Godin's grin got even bigger a possibly new friend and free ice cream. For some reason, Godin wasn't so sad about losing anymore. Yeah, that would be awesome. Can we get ice cream after your fight with the champion? I can't write after. Godin's eyes went sad at that response. For some reason, Harry was filled with the desire to make Godin happy after seeing the sadness in the kid's eyes. But Harry stated quickly, gaining Godin's attention again. After I deal with an errand, I can find you and then we can get ice cream. Is that okay? Godin smiled again. Sure. For some reason, making Godin happy made Harry happy. Weird. Harry sat on a railing, swinging his legs back and forth. He was alone on a roof, waiting for Piccolo to arrive. He told Remus that he needed to go do something. Remus didn't ask what, but Harry knew he will be questioned later. After winning the fight against Godin, Harry was sent back into the ring to fight Hercule. Hercule was surprisingly smart enough to realize that Harry could wipe the floor with him, so he tried to cut a deal with Harry. If Harry lost, Hercule will give him an unmentionable amount of money. What Hercule didn't realize was that Harry didn't want money, so when the announcer said begin, Hercule found himself out of the ring not a second later. The crowd was in shock that the champ lost against a child, until Hercule got back in the arena and started laughing and ranting about how he purposely lost because Harry deserved to see that there is a reason why there is a junior tournament and an adult tournament. The crowd cheered for Hercule and that was the end of that, well oh. Okay. When Hercule passed Harry to go to his personal quarters, Harry might have put out his foot that caused Hercule to trip and land on his face, total accident, really it was. Harry paused in his leg movements when he felt a presence behind him. Hello again Mr. Piccolo. I'm an errand huh? Piccolo drawled as he went to stand by Harry. Harry turned and sheepishly looked at Piccolo. You know I didn't mean it like that. Piccolo just raised an eyebrow. Harry grabbed at Piccolo's cape. Come on Mr. Piccolo you know you are one of the most important people in my life. Piccolo couldn't help but crack a very tiny smile at those words. I know kid. Piccolo put a hand on Harry's head, so tell me what has been going on, Harry. Harry winced at the obvious stressing on his name, short version or long. Piccolo looked at him, you can tell me the shortened version now, you can tell me the longer version when we have more time later. Later, Piccolo smirked, yes later you didn't think I will let you disappear into the unknown after the tournament did you? Harry looked like he was going to respond, don't answer that. Harry closed his mouth. Harry looked at Piccolo curiously, what exactly did you want to know now Piccolo? Piccolo turned to look up at the sky, I want to know why you aren't dead, why you look like that, why you are here, and why you go by Harry. Harry sighed, well to keep it short. The Supreme Kai, Harry paused when he felt recognition through their bond, you know him. Piccolo looked at Harry, I heard of him but I didn't think he was real. Harry nodded his head, he is real, and anyway he came to me in a dream a few years ago and told me I wasn't supposed to die. What? Yeah it shocked me too, anyway because I wasn't supposed to die and I wasn't going to be wished back, the Supreme Kai decided to reincarnate me, I pretty much got a new life and my new name became Harry. Piccolo frowned, why did the Supreme Kai do that and what do you mean by wasn't going to be wished back? You died of natural cause didn't you? Wait you didn't die of natural cause did you? The last sentence wasn't really a question it was more of a statement. Harry looked away from Piccolo, the Supreme Kai reincarnated me because of this evil wizard named Babidi that is supposed to appear at this tournament, according to him I am needed in order to defeat this enemy. Piccolo's eyes widened in shock, a new enemy? Piccolo shook his head, you can tell me later as we wait for the fights to begin. You never answered my last question. Harry tried to look away again but a hand under his chin forced him to look at his old mentor, who killed you. Harry's eyes widened in shock, why do you think I was killed? Piccolo glared at Harry, maybe because your body language screams that you didn't die of natural cause, our bond is telling me you want to be able to see your old family and friends but something or someone is stopping you. So who is it and how Gohan tell me? Harry shook his head back and forth. Come on kid. Harry shook his head again, now. 
Harry clenched his eyes shut tight and whispered something and Piccolo heard him but was too shocked to believe it. What did you say kid? I said my mother killed me. What? That bitch. Piccolo thought, how? Why? You know how I got sick. Piccolo nodded, well it wasn't because of a disease or anything, I was poisoned. How? Harry looked at his feet. Saiyans eat a lot of food and that includes half Saiyans too. Mother made me jello, which I consumed. She put chlorine in the jello. The chlorine got you sick. Harry nodded, it weakened me too. I was puking so much that my body was becoming extremely sluggish, it didn't help that my mom continued force feeding me the stuff as well as injecting me with sedatives claiming it will help. Piccolo looked sadly at Harry, Gohan. Harry looked at Piccolo with tears in his eyes, you know what the worst part is? It isn't the fact I died but as my mom was taking care of me she kept telling me I am a monster, worthless, and that if it wasn't for, for, for me dad would still be alive. Even though he wasn't the most affectionate person in the world, Piccolo grabbed Harry into a tight hug allowing Harry to cry on him. It pained Piccolo to see the most important person in his life like this. What he was forced to go through, I am sorry Gohan. Harry looked at Piccolo with tear-stained cheeks, there is no need for you to apologize. Piccolo looked into Harry's eyes, yes there is, I should have realized something was wrong. Harry shook his head, it's not your fault, my mom was very good at keeping the truth hidden, heck I didn't even know my mom even put something in the jello until she outright told me the night I died, you know there was one thing that confused me. How Goku even likes your mom even though she is such a bitch? Piccolo. What? You know it's true, what confuses you? How one day she tells me it is not my fault and the next she blames me, there is something I am missing I know it. Piccolo thought about it and couldn't help but silently agree. Even though Chi Chi is a bitch, her love for Gohan was always evident, and the grief she showed at his funeral couldn't be faked, but then why did she kill Gohan and so sadistically too? Piccolo needed to look into it, just like Gohan, Harry, whatever, he has this feeling that there is something more. Piccolo? If you will allow it I would like to see the memory for myself, see if I can find anything. I agree with you something doesn't add up, after I get the memory, you can go meet up with Godin to have ice cream. Harry smiled at Piccolo, okay. Piccolo, but don't you want to know more about me like why I have brown hair and green eyes? We can discuss that later. Piccolo smirked as he looked at his old pupil's waist seeing the appendage that was obviously a tail but not a monkey tail, it looks like you have more interesting stories to tell. Putting a serious look on his face Piccolo asked, are you ready? Harry nodded as he closed his eyes, he hopes Piccolo will find something in order to maybe prove that his mom didn't actually hate him and that something had happened to her. Chi Chi is or was his mother, and mothers are supposed to love their sons right? He couldn't but hear a small whisper in his head say if that is the case then why did Lily abandon you too? Going into the memory, Piccolo was expecting the worse. Gohan lying in a bed dying as his hellion of a mother watched in amusement. To Piccolo's dismay he wasn't far off, and even though he was semi-prepared, the sight before him made his heart clench painfully. If it was anyone else, he would have taken in the sight with cold uncaring eyes because he really did not care for others, okay he probably would have felt a little smidge of sympathy. Damn you Kami and your caring nature. But that feeling would have been so small it would have been practically non-existent. No. Only Gohan was capable of procuring such a reaction from Piccolo without even knowing he was doing it. Gohan was his first friend, his student, the one person Piccolo was willing to die for and did die for. Gohan was the one person that never abandoned him and who journeyed through space to bring Piccolo back to life. Gohan, he, he, accepted Piccolo for the way that he was. No matter how rude or mean Piccolo was, Gohan was always there with a smile that reached his eyes, and those eyes spoke of unconditional love and understanding. He didn't deserve to have Gohan as a friend or to even know him. The kid was too good for him, and yet Gohan stayed by his side, despite others telling him otherwise. Piccolo clenched his eyes shut tightly. This is why it was so much more painful to take in this memory of his best friend dying. Piccolo was a ghost-like apparition hovering near Gohan's desk. The memory he was in was located in Gohan's room. The desk was against the left wall near an open window. The curtains on the window were gently moving signifying a light breeze, and a bit of sunlight made it past the curtains falling on the clean floor. On the right side of the room were Gohan's bed and a chair. The chair sat next to the head of the bed. 
Gohan was currently lying on his bed and the state he was in caused Piccolo's stomach to curl. His friend should never have been in that state. Piccolo has never seen Gohan like that, beat up yes and close to dying, but those were because of battle. This though, Gohan looked so sick and weak. Chi Chi never allowed Piccolo or anyone else to Piccolo's knowledge. See Gohan when he was sick with the heart virus, and Piccolo was starting to understand why. Gohan was lying in the bed, sweat trickled lightly down his pale face. His flushed cheeks and his short intakes of breath as he slept fitfully spoke volumes to Piccolo of the struggle his young friend went through. It also told Piccolo, as he narrowed his eyes in anger that Gohan was definitely not suffering from the heart virus. The way Mirai described it and the way Goku acted when he had it did not coincide with the way Gohan was in the memory. For Goku one of the telltale signs was a scream of bloody murder as a hand clenched at his chest right over his heart, like his hand would be able to claw away the pain and even after given medicine a hand would still be clenched in the area where his heart lied. Gohan on the other hand had a hand resting lightly over his stomach, while his other hand was clenched by his side, twitching every once in a while to show his discomfort. He was in pain yes, but not from his heart. A door opened and Piccolo looked over to see the she-demon walk in with a bowl, an alcohol swab and a syringe in her hands. As she walked past Piccolo he noticed the bowl was filled with a green substance. Jello. No not just jello according to Gohan it was jello filled with chlorine. Chi Chi sat the needle, the swab, and the bowl with the jello down on the desk and then turned towards the window. Gohan dear, she said with a smile that made Piccolo want to snarl, it's time to eat. Chi Chi then closed the window. I am not hungry. Mumbled a tired and weary Gohan from his bed. Well I am sorry to say, Chi Chi began as she closed the curtain blocking the sunlight, the sunlight seeming to cause some strange shadows across her face as she did. You don't have a choice in the matter honey. Gohan strained to look over at his mom, his eyes having a hard time focusing because of the fever. Mom, Gohan questioned confused. Yes sweetie? Asked Chi Chi as she grabbed the bowl and took the seat next to the bed. Why do I need to eat that? I am not hungry, because eating it will affect your health. Chi Chi stated with a smile as she scooped a spoonful and put it in Gohan's mouth. Gohan struggled to swallow it. But mom it doesn't seem to help instead I think it is making it worse. I think my sickness may be an allergic reaction or something. Gohan saw a glint in his mother's eyes after he said those words but he ignored it thinking nothing of it, Piccolo on the other hand didn't and his eyes narrowed even more as he watched the scene continue. Honey the jello is doing its job, besides even though you read all of those graduate books you are not a doctor. Leave it to the professionals. Chi Chi fed her son another scoop of jello his movements getting weaker at each bit. When is the doctor coming mom? It has been days, don't you think he would be here by now? Chi Chi didn't answer her son at first only giving him another spoonful of jello. Mom please, Gohan begged, no more jello I do, don't, think I can. Gohan couldn't finish as he started to hurl, his mother expecting this had the wastebasket ready. Gohan grimaced as he looked in the wastebasket, more frequently he noticed he was puking up some blood. Chi Chi rubbed her son's back, Honey there is something you need to know, I never called the doctor. Gohan's eyes widened at the information but before he could ask why he puked again, this time there was more blood than anything. Chi Chi while her son was puking put the bowl of jello back on the desk and grabbed the shot and alcohol swab. The needle was made to pierce even Saiyan skin. After so many hospital visits which ended with untold accidental damage to equipment by those with Saiyan blood, Bulma and her dad took it upon themselves to create some Saiyan proof equipment. Once made Bulma gave some items, which included the shot, to Chi Chi in case she needed them. She rubbed the alcohol swab on Gohan's arm, and then injected the shot with a smirk, I never intended to either, especially for the murderer of my husband. Taking out the needle she stood and walked back to the desk, putting the shot down, she grabbed the bowl again and made her way back to Gohan. Gohan puked one final time before collapsing on his back, then he looked at his mother in shock, what? Gohan started to cough, murderer? You think I killed dad? But, but, you told me, it wasn't my fault, that I comma I didn't kill him, and that it was his choice, to stay dead in order to protect us. Chi Chi glared at her son as she shoved another spoonful in his protesting mouth, I lied. In order for me to get close enough to you, you vile creature, I lied. Do you know how much it hurt? She asked as she gave him another spoonful. 
that my son is nothing more than a killer and a monster? And that I had to act like everything was okay when in reality it wasn't. I had to tell you that it was okay that you killed your father, my husband. I thought I could live through this lie but I realized as time went on that I could not. That is why I will kill you for killing the most important person in my life. Chi Chi continued her tirade of how she hated Gohan and how worthless he was and how if it wasn't for him Goku would still be alive. Tears started to go down Gohan's face as his mother continued to force feed him jello, whatever was injected into his body was starting to take affect because Gohan was feeling weaker at each passing second. All this time his mother was pretending that she didn't blame him, so it really was his fault that his father died, she blamed him for his death so much so, that she wants to kill him. Gohan knew without a doubt he was going to die, everything was beginning to go fuzzy, but he had one last thing to ask. Kill, me? But, I, thought, I was just, sick. Chi Chi stopped her tirade in order to grin sadistically, oh honey you are how smart and you haven't realized it yet. Come on you pretty much have all the clues, Chi Chi narrowed her eyes. You were right when you guessed the jello was making you sicker, I put chlorine in each batch I made you. And the shots that I told you that were going to help until the doctor got here? They were various types of sedatives to make sure you couldn't fight back. When Gohan's eyes widened Chi Chi started to laugh, dear, this was the best way to kill you, I got to watch you suffer slowly and painfully. And to make it even better I get to watch as your heart breaks at the revelation that your mother despises your existence and that she wants nothing more than to see you dead. As Gohan started to slip away his heart was shattering, he can't believe that one of the people he trusted the most, killed him, yet even with this knowledge, he doesn't hate her, with his last remaining strength he looked at his mother, and that was when he felt something was off about her, well other than the fact she suddenly announced she hated him and wanted him dead. He didn't have time to dwell on it because he knew he was at his limit, with what remained of strength he mouthed. I still love you mom, as he slipped into darkness. As the scene darkened around him, Piccolo was in a mix of emotion. Seeing Gohan die like that hurt a lot, and if Piccolo didn't sense that something felt wrong with the situation, Chi Chi's heart would have been dripping in Piccolo's hand right now. As much as he doesn't want to, Piccolo needed to look through the memory again, there has to be a reason for why Chi Chi killed her son, there just has to. For Gohan's sake. Should I even ask why you two are stripping that man of his clothes? A humored voice called out from behind them, causing Trunks and Goten to freeze. They didn't dare to turn around to see who it was. I thought you said we wouldn't get caught, Godin whispered furiously to Trunks. Oh man, if mom finds out about this, I will be in so much trouble. I said if we did everything correctly, we wouldn't get caught, Trunks whispered back just as furiously, obviously, you messed up. Godin looked affronted at the accusation, as he glared at Trunks in the corner of his eyes, how did I mess up? We wouldn't have been caught if you would have stopped complaining. Trunks stated through clenched teeth as he glared back at Godin. What? screeched Godin in his normal voice, as he turned fully to Trunks' fists clenched at his sides, I was not complaining. Trunks turned to face Godin fully too and in his normal voice scoffed, Oh really? Then who was it that said, Trunks I don't know about this, I think it is a bad idea, every five seconds, it sure wasn't me. I didn't say it every five seconds, Godin pouted as he stomped his foot in anger. I also wasn't complaining. I was just saying what I thought and it looks like I was right. It was a bad idea, now we are going to get in trouble, because of your stupid idea. Trunks growled, my idea wasn't stupid, stupid, hey don't call me stupid, stupid head. I can say what I want, stupid, yelled Trunks getting into Godin's face. Shut up, stupid head, Godin said as he smashed his forehead into Trunks, causing Trunks to growl and push back. Stupid screamed trunks as he tried to win their forehead battle stupid head Godin, however wasn't about to let trunks win their little battle though as all of this was going on the owner of the voice that started the yelling match laughed to himself as he walked past the two fighting friends and over to the half naked man unconscious on the ground the two squabbling friends were too busy yelling at each other to notice their surroundings and temporarily forgot that they had one conscious audience Harry wasn't quite sure what he was expecting when he came upon Trunks and Godin's location, but it definitely wasn't this. After leaving Piccolo, he decided to find Godin. Harry was tracking down Godin's location by his key signature. He was wary at first at what he would find because he noticed he was being led to a discreet location. 
seeing the two stripping a man of his clothes twice their size. Was at first really disturbing. Yet, taking the scene in, Harry realized they were probably taking his clothes in order to pretend to be him so they can fight in the adult tournament, if Trunks muttering of, we'll show those losers we deserve to be in the tournament, were any indication. Now slightly understanding of the situation, Harry found it quite humorous, and couldn't help but ask them what they were doing. Seeing them freeze up like a kid getting caught with their hand in the cookie jar, made Harry smirk. His smirk turned into light chuckles when he realized they forgot about him because of their childish fight. Harry contained his laughter by smiling as he knelt down next to the prone body, watching those two fight like that was entertaining. It was like watching siblings having a friendly spat, Harry's eyes dimmed for a slight moment thinking about Jonas and how if things were different, maybe they would be having spats like that too, or that maybe it will be him and Godin bickering if he didn't die, shaking his head, he banished those thoughts from his mind, there was no point on dwelling on, what ifs, the past is the past and all Harry can do is look towards the future. A groan made Harry look down, it looks like Trunks and Godin's victim was starting to regain consciousness. He looked at the man with sympathy, the poor guy was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, with a flick of his wrist, Harry muttered a sleeping spell, it wouldn't do if the guy woke up just yet. Waking up half naked in the presence of three kids, who knows what would happen to the man's image if an adult happened to pass by, yeah it would be for the best if Harry just pulled containment duty. More importantly it would prevent Godin and Trunks from getting in trouble, just the image of an angry Chi Chi, caused Harry to involuntary shudder. Even if the anger would not be towards Harry himself, he would not want anyone to have to deal with her wrath because it may very well kill them. Yet, Harry thought as he decided to dress the sleeping man, Trunks and Godin were still ignorant to the world too busy arguing, from watching their interaction when Goku appeared, Godin did not show signs of fear towards Chi Chi, and actually hid behind her for a sense of protection, Godin trusts her, so obviously she hasn't treated him badly, yet, Harry frowned as he put the mask back on the downed man, before standing up and wiping off some dirt on his pants. Her attitude could change in an instant, Harry himself knew that from experience. Chi Chi was dangerous, even though she seemed nice now, there was a possibility she could revert back to her, hateful persona. That settles it, for the duration of this tournament I will keep an eye on Godin, just in case, because I can't bear to see anyone have to go through what I did. Harry grabbed the sleeping man and leaned him against the nearby wall. This way when the man woke up he would just think he fell asleep, and that getting beat up by two little kids was just a bad dream. As Harry stepped away from the man, the sleeping man's right hand fell to the ground and opened up releasing a crumbled piece of paper. Picking it up, Harry looked at it curiously, he knew it was rude to look at something that wasn't his, but his curiosity got the better of him. Opening it up, he tried to smooth out the creases so he could read it better. After reading it, he looked back at the sleeping man with sympathy. The note was a formal notice telling the man he will be unable to participate in the tournament due to the fact his spot was reserved for the junior tournament winner if they won against Mr. Satan. The note went on to thank the man for participating, and they hoped to see him again at the next tournament. Harry couldn't blame the man for crumbling the note after what was on it. To be so close to completing your goal, only for it to be taken away at the last moment stinks. The note also told Harry something else, that he just saved Godin and Trunks a lot of trouble, obviously, the kids didn't know that their victim wasn't a participant anymore. Harry was about to put the note back in the man's hand when a voice from behind stopped him. Hey what are you doing? demanded Trunks. Harry turned around and looked at the two, looked at the sleeping man, looked down at the note, before looking back at Trunks and Godin. I was stopping you from making a big mistake. Godin tilted his head cutely in confusion, a mistake? Then his eyes widened, oh did we grab the wrong guy? I thought he was one of the participants though. Before Harry could nod in affirmation, Trunks elbowed Godin in the ribs. No you idiot, he is not stopping us from making a big mistake. He was preventing us from carrying out our plan. See he put the clothes back on the man. Godin looked at the sleeping man that was fully clothed again. Ah, you are right Trunks. Ignoring Trunks' reply of duh, Godin looked at Harry in betrayal, how could you do that? Godin's lip trembled, I thought you wanted to be our friend. Harry felt anger surge through him at the accusation that he would betray anyone, but quelled it, there was no point at getting angry and yelling at the two, they were only kids after all, even if they have the power to destroy the earth if they set their minds to it. No, it would be best to remain calm. Staring into Godin's eyes, 
Harry calmly but firmly stated, I do want to be your friends, wait let me explain. He put a hand up to stop the two from interrupting, I do want to be your friend, and a true friend will stop their other friends from doing something that is pointless. Godin looked put out after hearing what they did was pointless, while Trunks looked angry and was not afraid to speak up. What do you mean by pointless you jerk? Trunks said while waving a fist at Harry angrily, we wanted to partake in the adult tournament, like we should have been able to from the beginning. So how is that pointless? He looked Harry up and down, oh I get it, you were afraid of fighting us again because you cheated in both of our matches in order to win, am I right? Harry looked at Trunks in disbelief. The kid really just said that, Harry couldn't help himself he burst out laughing clutching his sides. Trunks seemed to get angrier, what are you laughing about? Stop laughing. Harry tried to stop his laughter by covering his mouth, after a few moments his laughter died down to soft chuckles. I am laughing because of how many conclusions you jumped to. First, Harry said as he lifted a finger, I didn't cheat in our matches, you both underestimated me, you more so than Godin. Second, lifting another finger up, I am not afraid of fighting you, I told Godin I would not mind sparring again another time and finally, lifting a third finger up Harry said with a smile, I was stopping you from making a big mistake. You see this guy here? Harry asked while pointing with a thumb at the sleeping adult. This man was a participant but not anymore because he was 15th in line which means he has to give his spot up if the junior tournament winner won. So you see, you two would have gotten in trouble for assaulting the man and you wouldn't have even benefited from it. Godin and Trunks soaked the information in, understanding started to dawn on Godin and then embarrassment at accusing Harry of betraying them set in. Godin looked at Harry, honesty shining through his eyes, I am so, he was cut off when Trunks put an arm in front of Godin's face. Trunks narrowed his eyes at Harry, don't apologize just yet Godin. How do we know you are telling the truth? For all we know he could be the 14th participant or something. Harry had to resist rolling his eyes, Trunks really is like his parents, arrogant. You want proof? Here read this, said Harry as he handed Trunks the paper he was holding. Trunks grabbed it and read it before grudgingly handing it over to Godin to read, he then turned his head to the side muttering a light fay. Godin after reading it, handed it back to Harry before bowing, we really do owe you an apology sorry for acting like that. Godin then looked to the side at Trunks, aren't we sorry Trunks? This was said with a bit more force. Trunks glared at Godin, and then glared at the ground before sagging his shoulders in defeat. Sorry for jumping to conclusions. He then kicked a stray stone on the ground lightly, we just really wanted to fight against strong opponents. Harry's eyes softened at the apologies, I understand your desire to put your skills to the test, I just didn't want for my two new friends to get into trouble, especially pointless trouble. With a beaming smile at the two Harry put a fist in the air, now who wants some ice cream? My treat. Both Godin and Trunks eyes lit up at the prospect of food, pushing aside any remaining thoughts they had on the conversation. We do. This is how the Z fighters and Vital, minus Piccolo, found the three, stuffing their faces with a bowl of ice cream and gumdrops that seemed to be the size of the table. Most of them started to sweat drop at the sight, while others turned away in embarrassment. Well looks like the two made a friend with the same appetite, Krillin joked with an embarrassed laugh. Goku on the other hand looked at the ice cream in awe. Hey Vegeta, Goku said in an excited whisper eyes going wide. It is a mountain filled with gumdrops and ice cream. Vegeta growled and twitched, shut up Kakaro. Goku not deterred by Vegeta's foul mood went closer to the kids, mouth watering as he stared at the mountain of ice cream longer. Before he could ask if he could have some a spoon appeared in front of his face, grabbing it he followed the arm attached to it, to see who it was. It was the boy who won the junior tournament, his head was still turned away from Goku, happily munching on the ice cream. Not one to pass up free food, Goku's smile grew even bigger as he dug in. Everyone watching sighed, not surprised in the least at Goku's action. Between the four, the ice cream didn't last long and it came to a close after a small battle of utensils to see who got the last gumdrop. With a victorious smile, Goku stood up and stretched his back, looking up at the sky. Goten and Trunks had pouts on their faces for losing while Harry had a content smile but it fell slightly when he noticed Chi Chi and the others come closer. Chi Chi started fussing over Godin's dirty face, while Bulma handed Trunks some napkins and told him to clean up. Everyone except Harry in the group started laughing silently at Godin's feeble attempt at keeping his mom away, 
and Trunks' hump at being treated like a child. Harry looked at the scene with mixed emotions, but luckily was able to school his features when Godin gestured Chi Chi to look at Harry, no doubt telling her he was messy as well. Walking towards her son's new friend, Chi Chi noticed some smudges of ice cream on Harry's face and her motherly instincts kicked in. Dear there is something on your face. Pulling out a handkerchief Chi Chi lightly dipped it on her tongue and moved it towards Harry's face, not noticing the boy tensing as she got closer. Harry didn't hear anything past Deer too lost in his memories, all he can see and hear was from the night he was killed, Deer, this was the best way to kill you. When Chi Chi's arm was mere inches away from Harry's face her wrist was caught in a vice-like grip and a voice growled, stay away from my cub, bitch. Remus was for the most part a calm and patient man, and was usually hard to anger, unless you threaten his loved ones. So it came as no surprise to him when he found his son that he felt intense anger and protectiveness overwhelm him when he saw that horrid woman about to touch his cub. That wretched lady caused so much grief to his little one, who cares if Harry told him there is a possibility that there may be a legitimate reason as to why she acted the way she did when she killed him. She is a dangerous female that needs to be taught her place. No one will harm his cub if he has anything to say about it. With a burst of speed he was by the woman's side clutching her outstretched wrist in a vice grip and growled, stay away from my cub, bitch, before flinging her back towards her shocked companions, her husband catching her, before she completely fell to the ground. Remus ignored everyone around him in favor of turning to Harry and kneeling in front of him. Wiping off the ice cream on his son's face, he tried to look into his son's eyes. Remus frowned at the glazed look he was receiving. Cub, are you okay? was the response he got back. Before he could ask again, the group around him seemed to snap out of the shock they were in because the husband of that wench demanded. What was that for? Which was followed by voices of agreement from the rest of the group. Standing up he turned towards the group, he pushed Harry behind him, putting his own body between Harry and the group. He growled again as his eyes turned completely gold, that thing. Remus was not about to call the female human, was about to touch my cub. She was only wiping off the remains of the ice cream on his face, she wasn't going to hurt him, yelled a blue-haired female. It doesn't matter what she was doing, I will not let her near my cub, and he will not get hurt again. Everyone looked confused at that, he doesn't want his son, that is what they were guessing cub meant, to get hurt, again, before anyone could ask what that meant a deep but powerful voice bellowed. What is going on here? Everyone except Harry turned their eyes to the voice. Oh Piccolo hi. Goku stated in slight surprise blinking. Piccolo let out a silent sigh as he asked again, what is going on here? Something was going on. Otherwise, the guy standing protectively in front of Goha, Harry wouldn't be giving Goku's harpy the glare of death. Piccolo narrowed his eyes as he noticed Harry's glazed look. I am not quite sure, Kai was going to wipe the kid's face with a napkin because he got some ice cream on it, but before she could this man came and tossed her aside telling her to stay away. Goku's eyes started to widen, and then he called her the B-word. Piccolo rolled his eyes when Goku didn't say bitch, sometimes Goku's childishness was annoying. Ignoring everyone in favor of walking towards the protective golden-eyed male, Piccolo made a mental note to ask Harry what exactly this man was, because he didn't feel completely human and not many humans have gold eyes. Piccolo stopped in front of the man and stared directly into his eyes. I know. About? questioned Remus, his son held great respect for the man before him, but that meant nothing right now. The term I know could mean many things, and Remus was too smart to slip up and give the green man a clue. If Piccolo actually knew he will say it, or if he is as intelligent as Harry says he is, he will hint at it. Piccolo only needed to mutter one word and Remus knew that he knows Harry's secret, rebirth. Remus nodded in acceptance and then looked behind Piccolo at the confused faces of Harry's past friends and family. Looks like Piccolo was the only one who knows the truth at the moment. Piccolo after receiving the okay, turned back to Goku and the others. Leave I will handle this. Piccolo what's going on? Asked Goku. Don't you worry about this Goku, now go on to the waiting room, I will meet you there. Goku looked ready to protest, but then decided against it. Turning towards the others Goku said, let's get going guys, ignoring the protests he smiled and motioned them to leave. Grudgingly they started to leave. Goku took one last look at Piccolo and consequently the kid when he stopped in his tracks. At Krillin's questioning look at why he stopped, Goku motioned for him to continue on his way. 
Trusting Goku, Krillin did as he was told, he knew whatever Goku was going to do was important. Goku got a clear view of the kid's face when the golden-eyed man stepped aside for Piccolo, and he couldn't help gasp. Now Goku wasn't the smartest person in the world, he was not afraid to admit that, however he wasn't dumb either, he could actually be considered a genius for many things. One is that he knows how to fight, another is he knows his foods, and the most important is. He knows his family when he sees them. When he got a clear view of the kid, he just knew it was Gohan. Other than the discolored hair and eyes Gohan looked exactly how he did when he was that age, wait, if this was Gohan why was he so young? But it has to be Gohan. Goku knew he was the only one capable of making Piccolo hug him in public like he was a lifeline. Goku paused and blinked again. Yep Piccolo was hugging Gohan. Goku walked over towards them. Piccolo after helping Harry out of the memory, hugged him. Normally he wouldn't be caught dead doing this but Harry's glazed look had really freaked him out. That is when he felt Goku's presence behind him. I thought I told you to leave. Piccolo stated evenly as Harry and he looked over at Goku. Goku tore his gaze from Harry to look at Piccolo seriously catching the Namek off guard. He not used to Goku being serious often, I thought you wouldn't lie about Gohan being dead. Remus, Harry, and Piccolo looked shocked, but Piccolo recovered by saying, this isn't Gohan. Goku glared the kind of glare he usually reserved to the really evil villains causing the three to flinch, all three could feel the warning power coming off of Goku, do not take me as a fool, I may not be book smart Piccolo, began Goku narrowing his eyes, but a true father knows his kin. Harry looked at Goku in shock, his past father recognized him? Piccolo only truly recognized him with the help of their link, but his father claims to know that it is him without it? You mean that? whispered Harry but Goku heard him and he turned towards him, eyes softening. You are my son Gohan, of course I would recognize you. Yeah you may look a lot younger than you were supposed to and your appearance has changed slightly but when I got a good look at you, my instincts told me it was you. Harry felt like he was going to cry, he wanted to run into his past father's arms and tell him how much he missed him, but he couldn't. It wouldn't be fair to Remus, who has been there for him through thick and thin, ever since his life as Harry began. As if sensing his distress, Remus put a hand on Harry's shoulder and murmured. Go on, it is all right. Harry looked up into Remus's eyes to make sure it was truly all right and all he saw was understanding. Turning to Goku, Harry went to him and wrapped his arms around his neck when he knelt down. Goku shakily returned the hug, not completely sure it was real, but extremely happy when he realized his son, that he was told to be dead, was actually alive, changed, but alive, and in his arms. Remus watched with understanding, he couldn't be angry at Harry and for the most part Goku. Remus knew how to tell whether or not a father truly cares about their children and vice versa. That is why he knew that Goku and Harry sincerely care about each other and that Harry cares about Remus just as much. Remus is slightly angry at Goku though for ditching his son to partake in a tournament, regardless of the fact he stayed dead to protect his loved ones from enemies. Piccolo decided it was time to interrupt this happy moment. Okay enough of the sappiness, we have a tournament to partake in. Goku looked up at Piccolo, still hugging his son, but I want to know what is going on. Harry turned to look at Piccolo and it looked like they were having a silent conversation. Piccolo grumbled before saying, we will tell you on the way to the waiting room, let's go. By the time they met up with the others, Goku was told about how Gohan was reborn, they omitted the fact that he was killed by Chi Chi, so Goku still believes he died of the virus. Goku was only going to be here for a day they didn't want to ruin the rest of his day by telling him his wife killed his son because she blamed her son for her husband's death. How he came to this tournament in order to help fight a new enemy, why Remus acted so viciously to Chi Chi. They told him that Remus was so protective because of the way the Potters treated Harry. They also played off the Potters treatment of Harry as the reason why Harry tensed up when Chi Chi was near him. The last thing Harry made Goku promise was to not yet reveal who he was. At first Goku wanted to protest, but it died on his lips when he saw his son's expression. That slightly broken look that conveyed that there seemed to be a lot more going on than he was told. However, he loved his son, and will not push the subject. His son will tell him in his own time. Goku agreed to keep it a secret as long as he could. When the others saw that Harry and Remus were with Piccolo and Goku they tensed expecting a fight. Yet, Remus apologized for making a scene by giving the excuse that his son wasn't treated the greatest growing up. 
They all seemed to accept it and a few gave Harry pitying looks which Harry ignored. After a little bit the people who were going to fight split away from those watching. Harry gave a big hug and a grin to Remus before running up to walk in step between Piccolo and Goku. As the fighters walked towards the waiting room, Goku decided it was time to lighten up the mood. No matter what the announcer says, Goku began, don't get the nachos, I had them, yuck. Goku's face turned slightly sour at the thought of the nachos. Goku loves food but those nachos were really bad. Yeah no joke, said Krillin with smile, if you got one day, you got to eat well. Hey there is the waiting area for the athletes. They were stopped from entering when a nicely dressed purple man with a mohawk, with pierced earrings and a tall looming reddish pink man stepped in their path. Hello Goku. The one with the mohawk said eyes gleaming with hidden knowledge. My name is Shin and this is Koibato. We're pleased to make your acquaintance. Thanks for watching if you love this please subscribe share and like it till then bye bye guys.